Nazis. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network. I need your help to get to the year 1985. You're listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. All right, welcome. Fade to Black. Bespoke Radio. For the masses. Uh, yeah, man. How you doing? How you doing? Today's Tuesday, October 25th, 2022. It's Halloween. Let's do this, man. I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States. Hither and tither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south. Far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer, and NX Networks. Grace Hobbs. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? How you doing? How you doing? Wow, it's almost Halloween. That's right. And to help celebrate tonight, we have very special guest. Dan Terry is with us for Halloween night five. That's right. Dan Terry, ghost hunter. That's right. He's also a man of the law. Talk more about that tomorrow night. It's the return of Shaw, the Loon Witch, for our annual Halloween special that's going on tomorrow night. Back to back to back to back phone calls and Shaw giving her readings bup, 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 in real time. So great. And uh, talk to Shaw. I talked to her yesterday, day before. She's amazing. I'm just so looking forward to this. I think. I think this is the ninth year. Or do we do nine and it's 10? I think it's number nine. Nine straight years of Shaw the Loom Witch. That kicks off tomorrow. And then Thursday night is another fader night with open lines all night long. All right, let's get things started here. Um, I've got a lot of, you know, I was talking last night about you know, about uh, going to the mountaintop, checking it out. You go up one way, you come down a different person. And, you know, and I was, you know, I wasn't complaining. I said, man, I'm tired. <laughs> and uh, just thankfully, thankfully, I'll be able to take uh, some weekends off here coming up, which I haven't done in what seems like literally months. Well, it is. It's literally been months. But I get to take some time off, recharge the batteries and I keep telling you know, I'm on the phone all day and and uh, uh emails and stuff. I'm saying the same thing over and over again. I think I've got my sea legs back. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> Not really. Oh, uh, you know, I'm psyching myself. Psycho, I'm I, I'm better now. <laughs> I feel better now. So there you go. Uh, I'll tell a story. I'm going to tell a quick story. Um, this is down in Panama, and we go. This is uh, this has pot in in the story, marijuana, 
And we go up the coast uh, to a beach, and we go with um, a couple of uh, adult friends. And um, it's uh, me and my sister, my older sister, who I'm not going to talk about right now. She'd really be angry if I said her name on the air and told the story, too, as well. But this is what happened. So we go up the coast. And in the trunk of the car is just a bunch of party materials. And before we left, we all ate a brownie. That's right. It was before brownies were the thing. And uh, I'd never done this before. I'm in the backseat of the car. My sister's sitting over here. And um, uh, the two adults are driving. Oh, uh, fear and loathing in Las Vegas, man. It's kicking off. And so anyway, we, we pull up to... Uh, to this beach and a couple hours later, remote, you know, we go out and we're on the beach and they open up the trunk of the cars, all this food and good and things and party materials. And my sister is standing next to me. She's right here. And I'm on the side of the car looking into the trunk and I feel something brush down my back and I look and it's my sister. She's passed out. She's right there looking straight up. And I go over, are you okay? And she opens it. She goes, yeah, I'm fine. Uh, what are you doing? I said, what am I doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Get her up, stand her up. For the rest of the afternoon, the only words out of her mouth were, I'm better now. I feel fine. <laughs> For hours. What's up? Uh, I'm better now. I feel fine. Oh, man. We were driving home. Sun, it's dark. Backseat. I'm better now. I feel fine. True story. Happy Halloween, everybody. I don't know where that came from. Oh, I've got my sea legs back. I feel fine. So there you go. Coming up, I will be hosting and emceeing the Conscious Life Expo this February 9th through the 13th, 2023 at the LAX Hilton. Tickets right now. Schedule right now. Speakers right now. Click on the link below. On Saturday, a couple of weeks later, Saturday, April 1st, 2023, I will be hosting the Parapod Festival right here in Los Angeles at the Hyatt Regency in Valencia, California. This is a live one-day awards ceremony, podcast awards, film festival. It's a full-on media event. And if you are a creator, if you're a content creator in the paranormal realm, supernatural, right, Right now, click on the link below, parapodfilmfest.com. Get your stuff submitted. Get it submitted so we can check it out and review it, and and uh, maybe you'll get a reward. That's right. A reward for your hard work in the form of a statuesque, just you want that. Right now, parapodfilmfest.com. Click on the link below. April 7th through the 14th, a week after that, 2023, I will be hosting and presenting on the Hidden Secrets Seminar at Sea Cruise. And uh, departing from Los Angeles, we're going to go down uh, through Mexico, make a U-turn, come back to L.A. one week, April 7th through the 14th, 2023. Come and take a cruise with me. Come and hang out. All right? The links are below. Um, and then a week from yesterday, six days from today, it's the one-year anniversary of The X. That's Halloween night, Monday, October 31st. And uh, we are going to originate all the festivities right here in the bunker and broadcasting to the world with my co-hosts, Race Hobbs and Margie K. We've got a long list of of guests that are going to be on with us. We're going to be doing some paranormal ghost hunting live on the show. And we're also going to find out live who won the best decorated haunted house. 
all of your submissions. Get it done right now. The Unex Network. Click below. Send us your pictures. I'm a judge. Yeah, don't send me your name. I don't want to know your name. I don't want to know if it's a fate or not. I can't. But donations are accepted. That's right. All right. All right. All right. Unexnetwork.com. Follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. The sandbox on Twitter is hashtag F2B. Any questions or comments, tonight's show, anywhere else, there. <laughs> oh, man, Twitter. You guys are too much, man. Hashtag F2BQ on Twitter. So is it true what they say about Panama Red? I. It's, how do you even know? I haven't heard anybody say Panama Red Sounds like a Cheech and Chong record. Panama Red. Uh, I don't know. What do they say, David? That's in Twitter. It's fade to black questions right there. So is it true? What do they say about Panama Red? Remember that Colombian gold? Lamb's breath from Jamaica. You remember all those wacky names? Of, of the weed way before the green stuff came in. Let's get to the breaking news. This is crazy. The International Space Station just took evasive action to dodge a fragment of a satellite destroyed in uh, November 2021 Russian anti-satellite test. Yesterday, yesterday, last night at 8.25 p.m. Eastern Time, the ISS team fired the thrusters on a Pro Progress 81, a Russian cargo ship attached to the station, for a total of five minutes and five seconds to avoid the debris fragment. This predetermined debris avoidance maneuver, otherwise known as a PDAM, was performed in order to provide the ISS an extra measure of distance away from the predicted track of the debris fragment. The, the maneuver raised the ISS altitude by a quarter of a mile from Earth. Absolutely incredible. Now, going on, I've been watching the ads for this. I think it's coming to L.A. The National Geographic Society is hosting Beyond King Tut, the immersive experience, which opens on October 28th on Pier 36 in New York City. It's opening for the 100th anniversary of the discovery of King Tut's tomb that happened back in November 2000. Uh, it, it, the anniversary is in November 2022. While there are no physical artifacts from the tomb in the exhibit, you can experience a recreation of his tomb as well as the vast amount of riches found sealed within, pictured with perfect clarity. This is the third city so far for this traveling exhibit. It has previously visited Boston and Washington, D.C. There you go. Now, for all of you cat people out there, you knew this already, but it's been verified. A small study has found that cats may change their behavior when they hear their owner's voice talking in a tone directed at them, the cats, but not when hearing the voice of a stranger or their owner's voice directed at another person. The study of 16 cats is published in the journal Animal Cognition and adds to evidence that cats may form strong bonds with their owners. Who knew? The team from the University of Paris, Nanterre, investigated how 16 cats reacted to pre-recorded voices from both their owner and that of a stranger when saying phrases in cat-directed and human-adult-directed tones. It's proof of nothing. <laughs> cats are aliens, man. They, they, they created us. To take care of them. That's it. Cat's got it figured out. All right. Kevin Bacon back in the news. 
It's not for what you think, though. Kevin Bacon is coming to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's right. As superhero, Kevin Bacon. That's right. It's a move that's sure to make the Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon game even easier. He is featured in the new trailer for the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special. Now, the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special is due on Disney Plus November 25th. Kevin Bacon. Yeah, he's got a pretty good band, too, by the way. Let's get this show cracking. Have you seen... Have you seen She-Hulk, Attorney at Law? Have you seen that? It's pretty good. I'll leave that right there. I'm just, just the name. She-Hulk, Attorney at Law. All right? It's like, no, nah, I'm not going to watch that. That's a pass. No. I binged it. <laughs> it's like eight or ten episodes, a uh, half hour each, so you can just bang it out in a night. But the last episode, the ending of the last episode is epic beyond measure. I'm just going to leave that right there. You got to check it out. All right, let's get this show cracking. On this day in history, this is sad. I didn't dig this day in history. I want to remind you, back in 1994, Susan Smith, remember her? Susan Smith reports a false carjacking to cover her murder. Nine days later, she confessed that the carjacking tale was false and that she had driven her Mazda into a lake to drown her children. I knew she was, I knew she was, for the word go, I knew she did it. 1994, fader fact. All right, now, I vetted this today, and uh, I'm going to get to the end of my skis, and then I'll tell you the fader fact. I went on Google Earth. I did the full-on investigation, and it's nuts. It's real. Then I went to Wikipedia. I read the whole history. It's just crazy. Fader fact. The most remote inhabited place in the world is the Tristan da Cunha Islands. That's right. In the southern Atlantic Ocean. It's in the exact middle of South America, Africa, and Antarctica. It's right in the middle. Population, 293. That's right. No pizza delivery. But they do have the Albatross Bar and Lounge. Yeah. You got to go check it out. Tristan da Cunha. And, and check out the little village there. It's, it's, it's actually pretty nice. Crazy history. And, uh, and here's the deal. You can't buy land. You can't buy a house. And you can't move there. That's it. The inhabitants of that island. <laughs> that's it. They've laid down the law. This is we are who we are. You can visit, but you can't stay. <laughs> Nothing is for sale. Nothing is for rent. Yeah, it's trippy. Go check it out. Tristan da Cunha. All right. Tonight, we have very special guest, Lee, uh, Lee, Dan Terry. I almost said Lee Spiegel. Dan Terry joins us for night five of our Halloween month. And uh, tomorrow night, it's the return of Shaw the Loon Witch for our annual Halloween special. And Thursday is another fader night with open lines all night long. Now, it's it's Halloween. Oh, 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 oh. Let me hit this River Moon coffee. <sighs> Waiting for me. Halfway through the show, we got two segments. I've got a French press just waiting to be 
just waiting to go. Mmm, so good. Rivermoonwellness.com I like my coffee dark. I do. I really do. All right, Fade to Black Blend, F2B Blend. That's the promo code. All right. So, um, it's Halloween. And I like my coffee, Doc. It's Halloween. And uh, I've only got, well, okay, let's, let's, let's say that I've only got one real ghost story. I live in a haunted house. That doesn't count. That's just like real-time stuff. But uh, I've only got, you know, like, you know, looking back. But do you remember the movie Stand By Me? Love that movie, Stand By Me. And I remember uh, the first time that I saw Stand By Me, I, I was probably in high school, uh, right right around. Yeah, I must have been in high school. I thought, man, that's just my childhood, right? That's That's what we did. So let's back up. I've got a stand by me story for you. In Waukegan, Illinois, Clearview Elementary School. I talk about Clearview all the time. Look it up. Uh, I think the street we lived on it was like called Berwick or something. And the the elementary school was across the street and behind the elementary school was like a national guard uh barracks thing they had jeeps and once in a while a helicopter would come in and that was directly behind the school i assume if you go on google earth today waukegan illinois and you look up clearview elementary school it'll take you right there you'll see it there's clearview and i'm assuming i haven't checked um but the uh, National Guard, you know, little mini base is is behind the school. But here's the school. Here's National. Over here on the north side was a swamp. Now, like a, a bona fide swamp, like the swamp thing lived there. It was It was a swamp. And... My brother, Mike, who recently just passed away uh, a couple of weeks ago. I haven't mentioned it on the air, but uh, he passed away right before I went to Europe, uh, went to Egypt. So my brother, Mike, who's a year or two younger than me, he he was nuts. And so I'm like seven, eight years old. So he would have been like six. He was just always wandering off and, and, and doing stuff. And one day, and I, so the swamp, I never really got close. I would see it. You know, it's like this stagnant pond, but I never went over there. I, I, I really didn't dig it. I didn't like the smell. He comes up to me one day and he goes, hey, man, you want to see a dead body? Yeah. Where is it? It's in the swamp. All right, let's go. So we, we walk out of our apartment. We go across the street, up the hill around the corner over to the swamp and in the middle of this swamp was from the window up from like the windowsill up was like a ford model t you could see it, an old timey car and you could see it sticking out of the middle of the swamp surrounded by water and my brother goes there it is i go where it goes inside the car i'm looking i'm like what i don't see nothing it's there so we walk back home and next door, uh, in the apartment next door, was this lady named Shirley. And uh, she babysat for us when my mom was working. And I, th- I think that's what was going on this particular day because we go into Shirley's apartment. And, and my brother and I are talking about the dead body right? <laughs> at the swamp. A few minutes go by. There's a knock at the door. Shirley gets up and answers it. And I hear somebody say, we're here about the dead body. <laughs> I look at my brother and I get up and I look out the window. It's a cop car. What? Shirley opens up the door. The cop says, you and you show me the dead body at the swamp. I'm like, man, 
And uh, so we walk. It was one cop. And walk. We, the cop follows us. We go over past Clearview, around the corner to the swamp. And uh, my brother goes, it's right there. The cop says, where? It's in that car. Cop says, what? Cop walks into the swamp. He's in a uniform. Walks in. Just, I couldn't believe him. Walks all the way up to the car. Looks in. Looks back at us. Says, there's no body. Well, there was one. Oh. We walk back out. Cop comes out. We walk down the hill. Nobody's talking to anybody. We go back in and and uh, cop says, there's no dead body. That's, that's about all I remember with the cop. He splits. And I'm sitting in there with my brother, man. I'm like, man, we are in trouble. And, and Shirley lays into us. And I'm looking at my brother. My brother goes, it was there. It was not. Nah, I didn't see it. So there you go. That's my Halloween. That's my Halloween stand by me. Dead body story. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. Tonight, ghost hunter Dan Terry right here on this very program. And uh, he is the host of Most Haunted over on the X. Tonight, he's with us. I've got some video that he sent me. Uh, I, I think I've got a picture or two. I'll have to go back and take a look at that. And we've got a lot of ghost stories we're going to be telling tonight. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. On the Game Changer and Unex Networks, Ray's Hobbs. We'll be right back after this short break. Stay with us. This is Nicole Church, daughter of you know who, and you're listening to Fade to Black on JimmyChurchRadio.com and the Game Changer Network. You're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the X. You're listening to Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fate to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fate to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. This is the only way forward. This is Fade to Black. Make contact. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can get our podcast for just $2 per month. All you have to do is click on the podcast banner over at jimmychurchradio.com. Hello, Fade or Nots, Jimmy Church here. You've seen me with my thunderstorm. Now you can purify the air in your home and get healthy, clean, fresh-smelling air and eliminate odors just like I do right here in the bunker. The Eden Pier Thunderstorm uses oxy technology that naturally sends out O3 molecules into the air, which seek out odors and air pollutants in your home and destroys them. It's called a thunderstorm because it purifies the air just like after a thunderstorm. And right now, you can save $200 on an Eden Pier Thunderstorm 3 pack for whole home protection. With this special offer, you're getting three units for under $200. Seriously. 
Go to EdenPureDeals.com and use Fader 3. Shipping is free and it's easy. Just scroll down. You'll see my name right there, Jimmy Church. Click on it and get your deal today. That's EdenPureDeals.com. Do you have an interest in the paranormal? Then you'll love the UnXNetwork.com. The X is your streaming audio and video for everything supernatural, strange, and mysterious, like UFOs, Bigfoot, ghosts, and so much more. From hosts like Jimmy Church, Whitley Strieber, Micah Hanks, and Christina Gomez, visit the UnXNetwork.com show page for a complete list of all the paranormal programs you'll find on the X. Be sure to follow us on Twitter for updates at KUNXDB. Follow our Facebook group, UnX Network. Find the podcast on Spotify, iHeart, Audible, and Apple Podcast. It's time. It's new. It's the X. 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 Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show. On the Game Changer Radio Network. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Massey, and you're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black, I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Night five of our Halloween, it's not month, it's a Halloween two-week. Close enough. Tonight's night five. Dan Terry is the host of Most Haunted on the NX Network, and he joins us tonight for Halloween night five. He's a paranormal investigator and author of several books. He's a regular writer for Unex News Magazine, and the latest is The Ghost Girl of Alton. Dan Terry is a native of Franklin County, Missouri. He has been fascinated by the supernatural since watching his first episode of Coal Shack. Oh! See, I'm from Chicago. Coal Shack, the Night Stalker. All right, we might talk about that a little bit. Um, that, that show changed my life. Okay. Continuing that combined with an intense interest in history and storytelling honed by his years as a cave guide at the Merrimack caverns placed him on the road to paranormal investigation and writing. He recently, now check this. He recently moved from Missouri to the mountains of North Carolina with his wife and ghost hunting partner, Sherry Dan retired as police chief of the New Haven Police Department in August of 2018 and continues to ghost hunt around the Midwest. His next plans are to hunt Bigfoot. That's right. Sasquatch in the Blue Ridge Mountain. His website is spookstalker.com. I love that. I absolutely love it. And I would like to welcome the first time. To Fade to Black, Dan Terry. Dan, good evening, young man. How you doing? Good evening, sir. How you doing out there on the left coast? Man, man, man. I'm not doing as good as you. But, ah. but, but here's the deal, Dan. You get the first-time guest disclaimer. So let's get that out of the way, which is, Dan, it's just you and I sitting on my couch uh, sharing spooky stories. And where those spooky stories start, they start where they end the end. But uh, we're going to end as friends. There you go. Are Sounds you good. Sounds good. Let's shoot. Now, uh, before we get to Coal Shack, and uh, uh, I just recently, uh, six months ago, I I went and binged uh, all the seasons of, of Coal Shack from beginning to end. And I got to tell you, Masterpiece. All of it, all of it, all of it. Um, when I was a kid, like you, because you and I are the same age, when when that first episode aired, um, and, you know, watching it, you know, rabbit ears, you know, I'm sitting there. With my brother, I was like, holy crap, this is like the best thing I've ever seen in my life. And uh, I, 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 I just, I, and reading that in your bio, uh, which I, I acted surprised today. I, I've known this about you for a while. 
Um, but Cole Shaq was a game changer, I think, for, for a lot of people, wasn't it? Well, it is the beginning of the X-Files. It is the beginning mm-hmm. of uh, Buffy, Supernatural. It all came back to Darren McGavin and the way he created that character. And plus Jeff Rice, who wrote it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeff Rice was great, too. Um, the, here's the thing about Darren McGavin. You would see him on whatever, Laverne and Shirley, The Love Boat, Happy Day, whatever, right? You know, he, 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 he was Cole Shack. Yes. He was, you know what I mean? And, and Darren McGavin was great. I mean, he was just a spectacular uh, person, an individual, and actor, but he will always uh, be remembered as Cole Shack. There's just no doubt about it. That show really set me on this this path that I'm on now. Uh, do you remember the episode with the uh, senator who had sold his soul to the devil? Yep. And Co- Man, that that one scared the heck out of me. I, I thought there were demons everywhere waiting for me to sign in blood. Do you remember the one uh, where he went up to this mansion in the Hollywood Hills and the owner was a vampire? Yes, you that was... That? Yeah, it was actually uh, one of the uh, vampires made in the first Kolshak uh, made-for-TV movie, The Night Stalker. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right, that's right, that's right. And that house, I swear, that's every house in the Hollywood Hills. It could have been <laughs> any movie star's home. And watching him run down the street and down the hills and and and, and, mm-hmm. and trying to do the escape, I lived like in that neighborhood and oh. it was, it was just so, I mean, it's just the Hollywood Hills, you know, just a couple miles wide. Um, but that episode scared the crap out of me. That was a really good vampire and a really good vampire story too as and well. And she never spoke a word. No, 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 just, no, no. Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was man. That was just awesome. Uh, him tiptoeing around the bottom of the house. Okay. I don't want to, uh, re- relive that, but th- 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 it was just uh, one of the great episodes. So, um, uh, before before we jump off, Halloween is is it your favorite? Is it is, is this is this your holiday? Absolutely. Uh, you know, up until I left Missouri to come out here, there was probably three nights, four nights a month I wasn't busy giving lectures, giving ghost tours. Uh, speaking engagements, radio shows. Ah, that was it was a blast back then. And how do you? Uh, I'm going to bring up Dave Schrader and Devil's Perch in just a second. Um, how do you go from police chief of New Haven, right, to to this? Were you all? Is it the same thing? <laughs> right. Well, let's go back a little. Now, uh, think about it. how did Kolshak do what he did? He's a detective. Was, yeah. He went to the libraries. He went to the lectures. He went to the books. That's what a policeman has to do is research and talk to people and dig down deep, not just listen to what they say, but watch what they're, what they're saying with their hands and their eyes. So, yeah, the investigation part's very much the same. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I can see that, uh, except you don't – okay, so the law enforcement side, when you, you're not armed in an investigation, are you? And I'm only asking because in a couple of your videos, it looks like you have a sidearm tucked away. I do. It's not, oh, you do. That was a sidearm. Okay. Yes. At that okay. time, the department I was working for had a policy that right. we were to be armed at all times with a badge and be ready to help local police or, or whatever needed to be done. So yes, I was armed at all times. Okay. All right. I was like, is that, is that a, is that a (laughs) sidearm? Um, uh, okay. I'm going to tell you something pretty, pretty fun. I just got back from Egypt and we had a very large tour group. And so, uh, we hired, uh, we had, uh, two, four, six. I think we had six, 12, uh, six in each pickup truck, uh, police officers, uh, for an escort of our buses front and back. But we also had, uh, personal security mm-hmm. and, um, I, I didn't, I didn't, this is the first day and 
and my uh, my guy's name was Ed, e- Ed, E D, but it was pronounced Ed. And and so we're walking, and I just kind of glanced down. And I'm talking to him, and underneath his, he's got a, he's wearing a suit, uh, a nice suit, and I see his gun, right? And I thought, wow, it's kind of big for a pistol. <laughs> so I take another look. He's got a little machine gun. Mm-hmm. It's like this big, it's like tiny. Tiny little thing just tucked away. And now I got to tell you, uh, I'm in a foreign country and uh, that made me feel pretty good. It's not a weird, don't blame you. No, it's not a weird story. It's not a weird thing. I'm saying my, I, I was, I was comfortable, you know, and that, that whole thing was put at ease. I just, I, it, it just made me feel really good. So I asked him, I said, so Ed, after a couple of days, right now, me and Ed are b- besties. <laughs> Ed, can I hold it? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Please? Nope. Huh. You can look, look. There it is. You know, he opens his jacket up. All right. Now, uh, <laughs> leaving that aside, I have no, I don't want to freak people out about it. Egypt was wonderful. It was great. But. Um, sometimes you just, you need that, that comfort zone and, the, and uh, wearing of guns over there is a way of life for all man. Of I have never in my life seen so many AK 47s. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's at every turn. It's at every turn. Every cop, every, they're walking down the street, the, the pistol grip ones, right. Mm-hmm. Just walking with their hand on the grip, just walking down just every, I was taking, I took so many pictures of guns. I was so fast. I was like, man, looking out the window. Uh, anyway, okay, enough of that. Enough of that. Um, so here it is, Halloween. And I just told my little uh, ghost, you know, my little dead body story, right? My little right. stand body story. What is it you enjoy uh, the the art of the, the ghost story and 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 your adventures and you like why do people like this so much i love it and i can't i can't listen to enough of it there is a lot of possibilities i think for a lot of people there's something on the other side when i die there will be something go on and they're searching for that proof that there is an afterlife of some kind i mean if you have resigned yourself that you're going to be nothing but a worm feast, that's a pretty depressing future. Yeah. Yeah, that so, is. I think yeah. that's part of it for me. A lot of it was testing my bravery, testing my courage. And uh, then it just got uh, the thrill of the hunt. I mean, the, to get into these places and to try and get these spirits to do something. And then when they do and you get it recorded, uh, it's a Holy grail. It's, it's awesome. In uh, Dave Schrader's uh, uh, new TV show, um, oh, The Ghosts of Devil's Perch, I think is what it's called. Um, I could have it wrong. Devil's Perch, uh, it, uh, town. it's like Butte, Montana or Wyoming. Um, excuse me, Dave, for not having uh, the city right. But it's, it's a pretty big city. So they're there, and the story behind it is he's got uh, the local sheriff, you know, the boss, uh, on speed dial. And and so he's, you know, the sheriff is calling him up. We've got reports over and gives him the address. And there's something going on. And they go and invest somebody, you know, somebody has seen something or heard something. In a, did you ever get calls like that? Oh, yes. Uh, there for a while, it was, it was constant. People would call in and. Uh, one night at 2 a.m., a guy was absolutely convinced there was a demon in his house, and it slapped his son's girlfriend. And, uh, yeah, he wanted me there that night. And, you know, it's 3 in the morning and snowing. No, I'm not coming out that night. But uh, cases like that, uh, the one and only possible demonic case, and I am still not completely convinced, it did appear to be so. But uh, that started with a guy stopping at the police station at one in the morning and taking about two hours to get in around to say, hey, you know, I got a story for you. I got to tell you this. And yeah, he had something in his house. It just took him a while to work up the nerve to tell me about it. What happened? He moved into a home there in New Haven, and 
he, like you said, he should have realized at the time something was wrong. There was crucifixes on every wall, plural, several crucifixes on the walls. And uh, over the course of time, his son started seeing ghosts that would slap him, push him, uh, throw things. Then he saw another ghost come in that he described as a cowboy. He was a cowboy hat, a duster, and it would shove the other ghosts away and make them leave. So the boy started trusting that spirit. Now there's your demon. He got the boy's trust, and then he turned on him and started messing with him. Um, they said uh, they'd be sitting around talking to the kid, what did you see? And suddenly uh, one of the baby's milk bottles would fly off the sink and across the room. Or mm. The dogs would go crazy, whatever. Then he kept going on about this. And, and like I said, it had the earmarks of a demonic case coming up. So I called some friends of mine who are much better at that than I am. And they said, well, Dan, you know, we're in good shape here because it's not outside the house yet. So let's um, let's plan on coming in next Saturday and we'll see what we can do. The next day, the guy calls me. And this is another reason I think it may have really been demonic, but I'm not sure. And says, my son saw it on the school bus. So I called my friends. I don't know, maybe you know Stephen Lachance. He was, he was a survivor of demonic activity and such. So I called him and I said, hey, he's seen it on the school bus. And he said, oh, God, we'll be up there tomorrow night. So we get there. I meet up with them. Um, they use their stuff. They fought these things before. And they fought it from the main floor all the way up to the top level and then pushed it down to the basement, and it got around and went back to the top level. They, I mean, this was hours and hours they fought this thing. Before that, we had a video. Some of my people had a video set up. Most amazing video I've ever seen. I wish I still had it. There was a cat laying on the couch, on the back, uh, back of the couch, a dog in the floor, and an orb, bright orb, comes out of the window does a big circle around the room. And while it's going around the room, the dog is watching it, following it. The then, cat. You mean the cat? No, the dog in the floor. There, there's a dog and a cat. Oh, yes. okay. Okay. I'm sorry, Dan. Continue. So the dog is following it. The cat's sitting there and the orb comes right up to the cat's nose and hangs there for about 10 seconds and then zooms off. Uh, that was, that was incredible. Anyway, my friends fought it, got it out, and uh, they were convinced it was demonic. They were using the uh, salt and holy water and, and prayer and all of that. So this guy tells me how everything's calm and quiet, everything's going good. About three months later, he calls me back. He says, it's back in the house. Oh, man. I said, okay, uh, what happened? What did you do? <laughs> because it was out. He said, well, um, he worked at Chrysler in St. Louis. And he said, some friends of mine, I was telling them the story. And one of them said, hey, uh, my sister's psychic. Can she come to your house and, and kind of look around? And I said, sure. And she come in. She looked around. She looked out the back door and said, I see a child out there on the back porch, cold. Come on in, honey. It's all right. Well, she invited it back into the house. That's all they wait for is an invitation. Started over even worse. This time, uh, an Episcopalian priest came in, and apparently it took about six hours for him to fight it. He finally got rid of it. Uh, maybe a year later, these folks moved. Say a year or two after that, I get a call from another ghost hunter. And he says, hey, Dan, uh, a friend of mine moved into a house, and he's seeing shadow people. And he thinks there's something weird. Do you know any history about the house? I said, please don't tell me it's on Locust Street. He goes, yeah, 261 whatever Locust Street. Right. Oh, my God. All right. So I talked to this guy. I said, look, I can come in and we can start this fight all over again. But let me give you this advice. Ignore it. Don't give it any power. Don't give it any strength. 
ignore it and see if it don't go away after a while. And about oh, three, four months later, he pulls up to the police station. He says, man, I didn't want to call you because I don't want anything to hear me, but it worked. So if we ignore it, it faded away. Every now and again, I'll see it out of the corner of my eye. Or when I pull in from the store, I'll see it in the basement, but it's not doing anything now. And I didn't want to say anything and start it up again. But uh, he's thanks for the advice. I'm sorry, I'm not going to let you in my house, which that's fine. Is that, is, Dan, is that typical in that uh, if you go the other direction, right, confront, you know, try to be Zach Bagans and, and piss somebody off, right? Um, you're, you're asking for trouble, you're inviting it. And if you go the other way, ignore it and, and, and don't, and, and don't attempt to bring it on, then things will fix themselves. Is that typical? It has worked a lot. I have given that advice many times and it has worked often. Sometimes it doesn't change, but usually don't give it any power. And I tell people now, unlike a demon who can create its own, Ghosts can't create their own power. They can only take it. So if you ignore them and don't give them the attention they need or want, they're they're useless. They're they're just going to fade away. That's one of the reasons I'm still not certain that was demonic. It was even the priest got rid of it too easy. Right, right, right. I used to um uh I haven't watched Ghost Adventures in a long time, but I was no different than everybody else, man. I got, I got that, I got that itch bad, and I couldn't stop watching that show. I, mm -hmm. I couldn't wait for the marathons. I would just pound through it. But after a few years, um, and you start to see, I'm like, Zach, you're just asking for trouble. <laughs> you know, walking in, come on, come yeah. on, you know, and it's just like, man, uh, I don't know if that's the right. thing. Thing to do um but but then again it's a show i understand that part of it mm -hmm. but if you're if if you're going to be i'm going to use a bad word dan just stay with me you're fine if, if, if you're going to be a dick you're going to get dicked with and and that's 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 always been my thing and and when zach you know gets scratched or get hit i'm like what what, what did you expect no, it's, I have found most of the time, and I do on occasion yell and argue and, and fight with a ghost verbally, you know, or like, like he does. Very seldom. Because usually if you treat the ghost like a living person and show them a little respect, they'll come right back. They're lonely. They're, they're looking for someone to talk to. And a lot of the times they'll come right back and actually do things for you to show you they're there right? Uh, just because they're enjoying the attention they're getting. So usually if you treat them like a decent human person, they respond like any person would. Now, uh, as, as we're, we're going to head towards a break here in a second. What is your approach when you first go into a possible haunting uh, a, a location can you can you tell if this is going to be a negative experience out of the word go or you know from the word go is is that how you approach it? No, no. I uh, I find most of the time, depending on what big movie just come out, people think they've got a demon when all they've got is just a regular ghost playing, trying to get a little attention. I go in. I will sit down. I'll say hi. My name's Dan. And I'm just looking for evidence that you're here. And then I'll start asking questions, explain to them how to make the K2 go off, how to make my dowsing rods cross, when, you know, cross them for a yes. And then just talk to them like a conversation. That works best for me most of the time. What's your, uh, when we come back, I want to talk about uh, gear. Uh, besides your sidearm, what, what's that? <laughs> Uh, what's, what's the one piece of gear that you have to take dowsing rods? You know, I, so I saw that in, in your videos. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think dowsing rods, uh, in the right, literally in the right hands, uh, so to speak, 
um, are very, very effective. What do you use them for? I basically tell the spirit, uh, I'm going to ask you some questions. I just want you to cross the rods if the answer is yes. And if the answer is no, either separate them or just leave them alone because I don't want to waste energy with no. And uh, then I just start asking questions. And, it, you know, yes, no questions takes a long time. But I get a lot of good results from that. And my favorite, which some of the videos I have, is when the rods are crossing and the K2 meters going off at the same time, which is a good sign that there is a strong spirit there who is wanting attention. And they're answering my question in two different ways. Man, that, that's just gold for me. Yeah, at the same time, uh, yes. I might add. Let's take our break right here. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Ghost Hunter Dan Terry is with us. This is night five of Halloween for us leading up to the one-year anniversary of The X, which is Halloween night, October 31st, six days from today. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. More with Dan when we come back after this short break. Stay with us. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network. Your one million gigawatt paranormal powerhouse, KUNX DB, VX. Hello, Fader Knots. Jimmy Church here. You've seen me with my thunderstorm. Now you can purify the air in your home and get healthy, clean, fresh smelling air and eliminate odors just like I do right here in the bunker. The Eden Pier Thunderstorm uses oxy technology that naturally sends out O3 molecules into the air, which seek out odors and air pollutants in your home and destroys them. It's called a thunderstorm because it purifies the air just like after a thunderstorm. And right now, you can save $200 on an Eden Pier Thunderstorm 3 pack for whole home protection. With this special offer, you're getting three units for under $200. Seriously. Go to EdenPureDeals.com and use Fader 3. Shipping is free and it's easy. Just scroll down. You'll see my name right there, Jimmy Church. Click on it and get your deal today. That's EdenPureDeals.com. This is Billy Carson, founder and CEO of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. ForbiddenKnowledge.tv is the fastest growing and one of the most watched networks in the world. And I would like to personally invite you to check out our expanding library of TV, film, lectures, and special presentations. ForbiddenKnowledge.tv has over 6,000 videos covering lost history, health, UFOs, spirituality, and our future. We are committed to our community. And with my personal invitation, you can right now get your own free 30-day membership at Forbidden ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Your own library of information starts today at ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Because you never got that pony you always wanted. <laughs> Damn it. Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network. Listen, I know and you know that you've always wanted your first crystal skull. Or maybe you're a collector just like me, but you just don't know where to go to find the real thing. Then I met Carolyn Ford over at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. Carolyn is the guardian of Einstein, one of the most respected ancient crystal skulls in the world. All of her unique skulls have been imprinted sitting with Einstein in his sacred lodge and are carved from the finest gemstone and materials. Imprinting is the process of receiving the ancient wisdom from the master skull or master computer. Einstein, the ancient crystal skull. To see Carolyn's current collection of crystal skulls, just visit her store at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com or click on the banner over on our site. Don't forget to use the promo code JIMMY at checkout to receive 10% off of your order today. That's promo code JIMMY. Finding your first or next crystal skull is easy. Just visit EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. Hello, I'm and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Hi, this is Ray Hobbs here, repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. 
This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. We're the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can become an official Fade or Not by just going to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. Hello, this is Serena Wright Taylor from Conscious Life Expo, and you're listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church, who holds the Lucky Pony record for the best astrological chart since 1963. True story. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. On the Game Changer and UnX Networks, this is Fade to Block. Our guest tonight, Dan Terry, host of Most Haunted uh, on KUNX. And uh, I, I kind of want to uh, I, I want to get things uh, started tonight, um, but I'm going to do things a little bit differently. I've got uh, I've got this this photograph uh, that you sent me, and and I'm going to tell you I've been looking at this for a few days now. And I'm just going to bring this up. Um, I, I, I've just called this ghost picture. <laughs> uh, it, it's uh, okay. It, it's it, it's just creepy. What what's going on? When was this taken? And uh, tell us about it. All right, that was taken now. I guess about five years ago. And here's the story. There was a place in Washington, Missouri that I ghost hunted probably 30 times. It was really nice folks who owned it, and it was called the John Bush Brewery. John Bush came here from Germany back in the 1840s and actually started the brewery in St. Louis and then moved to Washington and opened his brewery there. It was called the Washington Brewery. His brother, Adolphus Bush, came from Germany, learned how to make beer from him, went to St. Louis and created the Anheuser-Busch complex. Gotcha. So this was his older brother, and he had this beautiful set of buildings and a mansion. It was It's awesome, awesome place. It, uh, this stage of the game had been divided into three, play, uh, three different sections for uh, events. The night before this photo took place, I was there. uh, The city of Washington had a ghost tour they did just before Halloween every year. And they always had me come down and just stay at the brewery and show videos. I had two tours a night. And I would show them videos, tell them stories, all that good stuff. When I was done, the owner of the building said, Dan, uh, a friend of mine got hurt in a car wreck and we did a charity drawing for him, which we'd done before there and uh, for his family. And I got some tickets to people to do a ghost hunt in here tonight. Would you mind sticking around and helping me out? Well, he knows I'm going to do that. So we do the ghost hunt. It's in the upstairs section. The lady who is renting that part for the event uh, and when I say she, she ran the company that rented the section. She comes up to me and she says, I don't know what you're going to do tonight, but whatever you bring up, you take home with you. Okay. She didn't like the idea of us being there. We right. did our deal, talked to some spirits with the dowsing rods, let the people who won the tickets do it, had a great time and left. Next day, I'm in a town called Herman doing a charity bus tour. Uh, for a Ferals in Peril, which was a charity for stray cats. And I get this photo sent to me about four times in half an hour. The bride sent it, a bridesmaid sent it, and two others. And what had happened, they had a dinner that morning. And 
it was before the wedding or after the wedding, something. And somebody during the cer- after the ceremony, while they were all there, took this picture. And to me, she's wearing a wedding gown. What do you think? It there's uh, the the short answer is yes. I mean, it looks like some kind of shawl or or something over uh, a woman's head, uh, whatever you would call that. Um, uh, it, yeah, yeah. That, I I thought I didn't know about the backstory here, right? But it's definitely a woman in white, right? With uh, with something over her head. Now, let me throw this one at you. As I talked to the bride and a bridesmaid, we found out this woman's grandmother had recently passed, and she held her wedding on her grandmother's birthday. So it was grandma's birthday, favorite granddaughter's wedding day, and grandma, who was a slight build woman with dark hair, to, in my opinion, shows up to the ceremony dressed appropriately. Um, I'm going to zoom in sure, uh, for everybody and uh, so you can get a, a, a closer look. And that, uh, you know, it looks like, so when you look at it from here, right, and then you look at it closer, this and this is what I've been doing with this picture. I, I see her mouth. I see an eye and an eye. So she's looking in this direction. Mm-hmm. That's that's what I see. Is that what you see? Yes, yes, that's it exactly. Like I said, I believe uh, she was there to celebrate her granddaughter's wedding. Were Were there any other pictures to go along with this? No, you know, that's the only one they sent me. Right. Right. That's a, that's a that's that's a picture of a ghost. I think so, and yeah. uh, it, it, the story just fits. Uh, grandmother was a thin-built woman with dark hair. It was her birthday and her favorite granddaughter's wedding day. There she is huh. at, with her family celebrating. Which family tends to show up at family events, even though they've passed. They they tend to be there. Um, what's, do you have, I know you get this question all the time. What's the most haunted place that you've ever been to, Dan? Uh, but there must be one where you go, you know what? That place was haunted. Uh, what's the most haunted, haunted place wow. you have visited? You know, just because I was there so much, it would probably be the John Bush brewery or a place called Enoch's Knob Bridge which was outside between New Haven and Washington, which we had a lot of adventures there. But, man, the brewery, I was there so much that the ghosts would react every time I came there. Right, Again, right. I treated them respectfully. I treated them nice. They liked the attention, and uh, they didn't let me down. What, why Why the brewery? What's the history? Did uh, workers die there? Was there some kind of tragedy? There was a lot. Uh that thing had been a brewery for since before the Civil War up until Prohibition. During that time, we know uh, the Confederates had taken it over for a while. Uh, we know that a, a wagon, uh, I, don't know, I don't know what they call them, the guys who delivered beer in a horse and wagon, he, after a day of work, went back to the uh, stable, put his horse up, sat down in his wagon, drank lye, and killed himself. That's one. Uh, There was at least one death during the Civil War there because we see a Civil War soldier uh, in gray walk past us, but he don't talk very much. And uh, the family lived in the mansion. Several of them are still there. A ghost hunting group that I had trained was there. And I'd, I'd investigated it also, but they had the local museum curator a guy named uh, Mark. And he was there with them while they were playing with an ovulus. And it started shooting out what they thought was uh, mumbo jumbo, just words they couldn't understand. And Mark, who absolutely did not believe in ghosts, says, no, that is not rubbish. 
those are the names of John Bush's sons in German. So what that thing is speaking is German, and it's speaking the name of John Bush's sons. So that was another, some of the ghosts there. I met, uh, I dealt with John Bush there one time. John, during the Civil War, had been a lieutenant with the Home Guard. And when General Price was coming in with uh, somewhere probably around 11,000 soldiers, he and his band of 60 men went across the river to link up with another Union group. And while I was talking to him, I kind of accidentally made the comment that that looked a little cowardly, although it wasn't. And after that, he wouldn't talk to me again. Interesting. Do you think, uh, you know, going back uh, to uh, the soldier, um, is this residual? You know, is it something that's hanging around because it's, it's um, uh, 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 you know, like a video, it's captured and it's, it's living in the ether? Yeah, I believe so. I don't think that one was intelligent at all because it always right. walked in the same basic area. But one night I was there doing a charity event for a young lady had passed away who was in my town, had passed away in a car accident. Her family was trying to get enough money together to get a scholarship program going in her name. We auctioned off tickets to the, to the brewery and did a ghost hunt there. And I had some guys from, uh, uh, what was it called? Midwest Spirit Seeker Society, another ghost hunting group. I work with a lot of other groups. I don't have one of my own. I work with others. Mm -hmm. And I brought him them in. These guys didn't really, they were very skeptical. Until while I'm talking, they're watching shadow people dart behind me constantly. Now, those spirits were real and knew what they were doing. Uh, one was even peeking out from the side and going back. And I looked down, these two men are sitting there with their mouths open, absolutely shocked. So there was some residual spirits there. There's some intelligent hauntings. Well, uh, when we we're going to get into uh, some of your video here in a second, mm -hmm. one of the things uh, that I ask all ghost hunters, uh, any investigator, I ask them the same thing. Um, and everybody's answer is, is, is just a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, what is a ghost? Is it electrical energy? Is it something else? It is, is it purely supernatural? Is it the same as a spirit? Is it somebody that has just died and is trying to make their way through another dimension? And, and they're you know, what, what exactly is a ghost? Well, it, as far as I believe, a ghost is a spirit. I think they're about the same thing. It is a human who has passed on, and for whatever reason, and there's hundreds of different reasons they may not have wanted to cross over, but for whatever reason, they did not cross over. They stayed here, and they're trying to, I don't know. what. It depends on, on the ghost. Uh, one of the videos we've got actually is a ghost who committed suicide and would not cross over because he was afraid it meant he'd go straight to hell. Which which video is that? What's the title of it? Uh, I think it's called Jim Afraid. Okay. Um, Jim Afraid is this one here, so that's one. I think that's one. Four. Okay. I think that is this one. Okay. Um, uh, let's Let's play Jim Afraid. I think this is it here. Okay. Sense either you don't want to cross or you're afraid to cross. Is one of those the proper answer? Okay. I've experienced this before. Let's try. Jim, was you Catholic? Wow. Yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna play that again. Sure. Uh, but uh, so two things are happening. That's you with the dousing rods. Yes. And crossing means yes. 
And not crossing is no, but we got a positive answer there. Yeah, you got a positive because they cross. But uh, the uh, is that a K two meter? There's a K two meter and a Cambridge, which is another electromagnetic field detector, and it's what was beeping back there. Okay, uh, let's play this again. That's either you don't want to cross. Okay, let me stop this right here. So, yeah. what kind of What's the meter with the lights on it right in front? That's the K2 meter right in front. And then in the background is? The red one in the back yes. is a Cambridge. And it... uh, what's that? Uh, no, I said the Cambridge. Okay, yeah. so that's in the background. And what does the Cambridge do? Exactly the same thing as the K2 meter. It flashes the lights, but it also has a beep sound when it's uh, going off. Okay, here we and go. It's, Let's roll. It's a little more sensitive than the K2. Cross or you're afraid to cross. Is one of those the proper answer? Okay. I've experienced this before. Let's try. Jim, was you Catholic? Wow. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, that was right at the same time. So the spirit was really afraid. Now here's the background. A police officer calls me up and says, Dan, I got a newborn and he's got scratches on him. We're seeing shadow people. Would you come by the house? They had just moved in about a month before. And he asked me if I'd come by and, and check the house out for him. So I, I stopped in. First off, the baby was doing what babies do. They're learning to move. It was scratching himself. The scratches were from the baby. But the previous tenant who rented this house, the earlier, the previous February, had shot himself in the head. Not only had he shot himself in that room, the owners of the building didn't even take the door down with a bullet hole in it. It's got a closet with a big bullet hole in it they paint no it no 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 are it's you serious me? so he is still there now i got this about two years later from a member of his family who called me and said was that on this street i said yeah they said, oh that's that's my uh dad jim a uh, father-in-law jim and started telling me the story that he loved his granddaughter and and when Dad and grandma was busy doing other stuff, wouldn't, wouldn't mess around with the kid. He would play with it. He loved children. So when they saw the shadow around the crib, it's because he loved that kid. But also, he had been a lifelong Catholic. And as you know, in the old days, you know, when we were young, suicide was an unforgivable sin. If you killed yourself, you could not ask for forgiveness, so it was a trip to hell, is That's what right. we were taught. Right. Uh, of course, now the church recognizes it, and which is what I told the Spirit, as a mental illness and not your fault. But at the time, they were taught that. Well, he still believed that and was afraid to cross over, so he was staying in the house and trying to play with the little kid. And I, I understand after I finished... Uh, they could still see the shadow once in a while, but they never had any more problems with seeing it uh, walking towards them, coming down the hallway, things like that anymore. I Every time, Dan, I'm not playing around about this at all, watching a movie, CSI, TV series, right? You know, murder, and, they, you know, and the blood, up, blood on the floor, bullet holes in the wall, and you see somebody... You know, going back, and I always want, you know, how's that blood get cleaned up? You see somebody, you know, with a bucket and a, you know, and the soap clean, and and the bullet hole. And I'm thinking, I'm taking the whole floor out. Yeah, I, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not. Uh, no, the whole floor comes out. The bullet holes in the door, the door goes, the walls right. come down. You put, you know, you don't, you don't leave, right? You don't leave no. the door with the bullet holes in it. What are you, what are you doing? Are, you are asking for trouble. Yeah, no kidding. And yet, uh, 
they pointed it out to me, and there was a notch. I could see a little spot in the uh, in the door. And then the other officer, his name was Richard, he comes, look at this. And when he opens it up, the hole on the other side was like that big. And it had peeled the wood away. So they just threw a coat of paint over it and shut the door. But the spirit was still there, and it was causing this family some, some concern. Um, do you remember the Hollywood, uh, North Hollywood bank shootout? Everybody oh, does, right? Absolutely. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm buying uh, a BMW and, you know, and I get the address and I'm going to go check out the car. I'm driving, I'm going up Laurel Canyon and, uh, I'm like, man, we're getting, this is like 20 years ago, maybe, maybe more. I'm like, man, wow, it's getting pretty close to the shootout. Right. And then I'm thinking this in my, and I, I got the street, make a right hand turn. I'm like, what? The house right in front of the shopping mall on the corner from the Hollywood shootout. So, oh, so I knock, I knock, I knock at the door. I'm not making any of this up, man, on everything that I love. So the guy comes out and, and the BMW's in the driveway. I said, so there's the car. And I go, hey, were you living here during the shootout? Sure was. My parents' house. No kidding. The car came up. The, the yeah, right here. <laughs> yeah. And he goes, check this out. We walk around the side of his house, mm -hmm. right there. Bullet holes all over the side of the house, hundreds. And I'm like, you didn't, you didn't. No, man, no, no. We decided to leave it up. I was like. <laughs> Oh my God. And I'm looking at this, it just writ it was like the okay corral, man. Just uh -huh. like it, like someplace in Iraq. Right. You know, it was it was absolutely nuts. Anyway, I no, I I'm taking that off. <clears throat> or selling the house, let somebody else deal with it. But but yeah, that was crazy. Okay, so um now let's go to uh, can, okay. I'm gonna pick these as some of these appear to be in order. So, uh, but some of them are single. So, Ken, okay, because you have, how do you say it? Is it Gas Gasconade? Gasconade County Jail, yes. Uh, Gasconade <clears throat> County Jail. So I've got three or four clips from there. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them aren't playing. But I have fourth Gasconade um, investigation. Then I have Matt Gasconade. Um uh, which one do you want me to play, Matt or Fourth? You know, the Fourth uh, investigation, I had uh, two paramedics, women paramedics there, who started singing to the prisoners. They, now, these prisoners are ghosts. And some really interesting stuff there. Why don't you start with that one? Okay. And, and how long is this video? Oh, a uh, couple of minutes, I'd say. Okay, let's go. Here we go. This is the Fourth investigation at the Gasconade Jail. Oh, I played. Hold on, hold on, oh, hold what? on. I clicked on the wrong button. Okay, man, hold on for a second. Just hang on. Okay, so this one is this one. Here we go. Oh, Whoa, 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 pump the brakes. All right. I heard that. So that was a disembodied voice? No, that was a spirit box. Oh, that was a spirit box. Right. It was loud. When the girls were singing, they said the wrong words, and the ghosts actually basically told them to shut up. Yes. Silence. Yeah, silence. Okay, now in the background here, we've got four meters, right? What are the right. what are the two in the foreground? The foreground is a uh, the front, the box, the spirit right. box, 
And the others are all K2 meters sitting close together. Okay. Two are going off at the same time. Let's continue. Um, great song, by the way. Silence. Here we go. You want another song from the 60s? Oh, shit. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> That's awesome. This was the, the most awesome. fun ghost hunt ever was the, the prisoners like to talk to me. Oh, man. Here we go. I'm stuck in Folsom prison and time keeps dragging on. When I hear that train a rolling, I hang my head and cry. Man. But what's the other one did? Yes, the, I, the, most of the audience enjoyed it. It's yeah. Folsom prison blues. Yeah. There, yes. Uh, yes. Wow. Okay. What other son of Jack That is awesome. Yeah, the 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 ghosts were really wanting attention. Wow. And what had happened, this this had a two cell jail in it for probably near a hundred years. That jail had been the brig on a pre-World War I battleship that they took the brig off, run it up the Missouri River, Mississippi to the Missouri, and then built, built the jail, jail around it. Yeah, wow. But at this stage, it was starting to fall into the basement. And the sheriff at the time, him and I had worked together many years before, and he said, Dan, if you want to ghost hunt this place, come on in, uh, because we're going to have to remove the cells very, very soon. So I got three ghost hunts and then a fourth one after they took the cells out. And that's what was going on here. Man, that, uh, those, those things were lighting up like uh, Christmas trees. And yeah, the, the spirits were enjoying the attention of the two young ladies. So it was that jail was so haunted and there was a, a spirit in there and he was hung in that jail by order of the court for the murder of two railroad detectives. And he was the one who most talked to me. And another time and there's a video of that's the one with Matt. Uh, another spirit came in there and started talking to us through a different spirit box. Okay. We'll, we'll get to that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right after we come back after this break, this is fade to black. I'm your host, Jimmy church tonight. Dan Terry is with us. These boots were made for walking. That was good stuff there, Dan. More with Dan when we come back after this short break. This is fade to black. Stay with us. Way out here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. You're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the X. ¿Qué tal mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Cartonel Tiburón y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio. Claro que sí. The Believer is the chilling true story of Dr. John Mack, a renowned Harvard psychiatrist and Pulitzer Prize winner. This is a outreach program from the cosmos to the consciously impaired. He risked it all to investigate human encounters with aliens. The Believer, Alien Encounters, Hard Science, and The Passion of John Mack. Written by award-winning former New York Times journalist and author Ralph Blumenthal. Now available in paperback from High Road Books. Introducing the Game Changer Blend from River Moon Coffee that delivers a customized blend made specifically for the fader knots. If the game is rigged, change the game. It's a bolder cup with some bite. Game Changer is the coffee of choice for those that prefer an organic dark roast that is slightly lighter and milder, but it's still dark. 
with wild notes of pecans and chocolate with a rich, balanced, full-bodied cup that is roasted to perfection for a great coffee to start your day as an after-dinner coffee or anywhere in between. Artisan, small batch, roasted to perfection. USDA certified organic, all River Moon coffee is freshly roasted and packaged in the USA. Just go to rivermooncoffee.com or click on the banners over on our site and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. rivermooncoffee.com Do you want to be an official fade or not? Of course you do. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. Just go to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. Fade or not, when you think about the future of our country and where we're headed, do you wonder about the food supply? I do. Disruptions in the food supply chain could be disastrous, and they usually occur with little warning. That's why the smartest thing you can do today is to stockpile emergency food water, and other essentials. I personally recommend My Patriot Supply. They're the nation's largest emergency preparedness company, serving millions of customers for more than a decade. In fact, they're the only source my family trusts for our preparedness plan. You should too. Right now, save 20% off a full four-week supply of delicious meals that provide 2,000 calories a day. Saving 20% helps too, doesn't it? especially now. So go to preparewithjimmy.com and get ready. That's preparewithjimmy.com. There's no time to lose. Do it now. So you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on 24-7 with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. You listen to us, and we listen to you. And so does the CIA. (laughs) Hi, I'm Ray Sobs, and I'm here to tell you about something I really think you're going to like. The Unex Network is a part of a larger group called Unex Media, and one of the things we offer is the quarterly Unex Magazine, which is available both in print and digital formats. This amazing magazine covers all aspects of the unexplained, and makes for a great coffee table periodical that is certain to spark enlightening conversations in your living rooms. We invite you to check out the latest digital issue for free. Just go to unxnetwork.com forward slash membership and fill out your free membership with your name and email and become a new free member. The new summer issue is now available and the theme is Time Anomalies, which includes a feature article written by our managing editor, Lee Spiegel. Just go to unxnetwork.com Network.com forward slash memberships. That's unexnetwork.com forward slash memberships and get your free e copy of the Unex magazine today. You are listening to Fate to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The Revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Halloween. Whoo, man, I'm going to have some dreams tonight. I cannot wait. I'm going to watch that new uh, Del Toro series, The Cabinet, or whatever it's called. It looks pretty creepy. Um, it, it's Halloween. I, it, it, it's what we do. And our guest tonight is Dan Terry. Now, Dan, um, you know Tony Rathman, right? Yes. Okay, so Tony and I... I Ghosts like music. 
We're 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 doing a ghost hunt uh, live TV. This thing uh, going on, and uh, uh, it's pretty incredible. And we have a huge, uh, uh, you know, multiple cameras and sound people, and uh, uh, a few um, uh, other ghost hunters. And, and th- we had about ten people in this room. Anyway, um, and this woman uh, was dressed in a period co- uh, uh, costume, nineteen thirties. And she sings like uh, a vaudeville tune, solo, a cappella. And it was incredible. She was just an amazing singer. Anyway, around the room behind me, I'm in. I'm on one side with Tony on one side of the room with the camera people o- over here. Everybody else is, and the rest of the room is over here. And in the perimeter, shaped in a U, um, on the countertops and the dressers and, and things were a bunch of meters and different, devices and things she finishes the song she winds it down the whole room is dead quiet and every single device in that room lit up it it lit up the room we were in the dark Mm -hmm. it was great it was like applause that's that's what I've, i've always felt that it was applause right yeah it was crazy just like what was going on there yeah. Of all the things, though, you're going to sing Folsom in, in a jail. Uh, but, but anyway. You're uh, in the country, and these guys were there in the 60s. So, yeah, it was a country song. Yeah, yeah. And they, yeah, and they all love Johnny Cash, too. <laughs> so, all right. So now, now, here we go. This is um, this one is, is called Matt. And uh, before I roll it, who is Matt? Matt was a uh, is a uh, video producer. He he makes the commercials that show before movie theater local mm-hmm. fourth yeah, and he wanted to do a ghost show, and asked if he could come along. And I said sure. The thing was, Matt is scared of ghosts, very afraid. Okay, but he wanted to try it. Well, we got there, got this. Uh, it's the little radio that can go through all the, the stations and pick the ghost can pick out the words. And this said his name four times inside the jail cell there in Gascony County. And he gotten more and more nervous. And after you play it, we'll tell you what happened after that. Okay. All right, here we go. Kind of make it. You not just say my name. What? I heard something come from farther out. It sounded like you saying my name. It sounded like it came from the door or the hallway. So the first thing? Yeah. And I, I would have put money on it being you, but I mean, <laughs> you're too close. Okay, Will, you're doing great. I appreciate it. And I'm, I'm just trying to nail this down a little bit. So, buddy, if you can tell me. Is there a spirit that came here with Matt to communicate with him? Ta da! Willie, are you still with me? Alright. That must be just a random word that popped up for some reason. Is the female that came here with Matt? Did that just say that? I was talking similar to it, but I couldn't say When I shit my pants, you gotta help me. Try that. Like, at least get me out of here. No. Waiting yet. Matt, I'm sorry. The spirit, I'm Willie, I'm talking to you, brother. The spirit that came here with Matt. That said Matt. I didn't hear it that time. And before, that, that ain't right. <laughs> and, 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 uh, okay. So what happened, what happened next? So, and I do have it on video. It was just, I don't want to send everything, but so I finally told Matt, look, let's try it this way. If with the spirit I am talking to, Point the rods at who you came here with. 
And both rods pointed right directly at Matt holding the camera. And then the camera shook because Matt turned it off and ran out of the cell. So I went and talked to him. And then we went and talked to the ghost. And here's the deal. He had just moved about three months earlier, bought the house from a widower. And the widower and his wife, his wife had passed away from cancer within the six months before that. They had like five children and eight or 10 grandchildren. The woman loved babies. Matt had just had, his wife had just had their second child, a young baby. And she had come back to the house to see the kid. And then she came with him from Washington to Herman to tell him that she loved his baby. She thought it was really a cute baby. He was so convinced his wife was going to leave him because he brought a spirit. So he called her and he said, honey, you're not going to believe this, but there's a ghost in our house and it came here with me. And it's the little old lady who used to live there and she likes our baby. And his wife said, well, that explains a lot. And his wife told the story that uh, she was putting on makeup, getting ready for work. The swing that you crank and then keeps the baby occupied had right. stopped. The baby started crying. She cr cranked it or she went in and it had already been cranked and started by itself. That's and that, that's when you move. Well, they're that's, still there. Yeah, it's when you U-Haul. <laughs> you get the U-Haul. Um I I I've, I've I've talked about this a lot. We'll get back to the videos, but um uh, I, I, I moved into a house, uh, over a year ago. I live here alone and stuff just started happening. And, uh, after the, it was, it was maybe, maybe about a week, uh, into it. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a big home, especially when you live here, you know, alone, it's even bigger. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, very, very quiet. And so in, in the beginning and, and here's the deal, Dan, when, so when, when I first moved in, um, I literally had a king size mattress and that was it. <laughs> the entire house is empty, right? Empty. No furniture. And what do you do? Well, we've all done this when you move into a new place. You walk around, sure. you know, you're checking, you're happy, you're smiling. Man, this is great. And so, uh, you know, I find myself walking around and just listening to the silence, just quiet. It's not quiet here anymore. It's not hearing? like like ever. Oh, man, just what, it, it, you name it. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 it's it's gone on and I quit. Um, I started to, to freak myself out. Um, and, and then I realized that I was right at the edge and anybody listening to me right now, please take this advice. When you get to the edge of something like that, you have a choice. You go into crazy town and you freak yourself out or you reverse the anxiety and you come back on this side and go, screw it. I don't care. Well, I went to the screw it, I don't care side of things because the alternative is I turn into the psycho dude on the street and I don't want to, you know what I mean? And I, I don't want to be that guy. Um, and I stayed on this side of the fence and I just, I just deal with it. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how many people do that. Their, their house is haunted and yet they don't care. There was a girl once asked me to check out her apartment and it had been the scene of a murder back in the eighties. This would have been probably right around 2003 or so. And she was telling me some of the stories of what she hears, what she sees. And then she said, the worst one is when I came home and the exorcist was playing on my VCR. No. Dan, I no. don't own the exorcist. No, 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 okay. no. So as I'm talking to her, she goes, but I don't believe in ghosts. She kept telling me, I don't believe in ghosts. And I said, after all of this, how can you not believe? And she looked me straight in the eye and said, if I believed it, I couldn't come home here anymore. So yeah. she just refused to believe. 
I um uh uh two things specifically um uh and I've told I think I've told this one a, a few times but I'll just share this with you this is how this is how I you know I'm some big macho radio host loud mouth big tough dude right not so fast all right so um uh, I got this thing with these shoes that are constantly moving in my closet and I, I've taken tons of pictures and video and things and <laughs> I just, I just, whatever. Right. So, uh, but in the middle of when this was going on and, um, you know, and I'm tripping, I'm tripping pretty good. It's about 11 o'clock at night, 1130. I'm watching a movie. I'm, I'm, I'm in bed and the room, uh, uh, the, the master bedroom part is, is pretty good size. There's a lot of space in there. And then to my left, uh, probably 10 or 15 feet is, uh, you know, a good walk. There's an, a reason for this. It's the audio part, right? So pretty good distance away is the, the, the bathroom door. Uh, it's not a door. It's a, a hall. A, it, there's no door in it, but the, the entry into the bathroom. And then you go through that probably another five or 10 feet. And then to the left is the walk-in closet. That's where the shoes are, are dancing the night away, right? Okay. <laughs> So, but that's, you know, it's a pretty good distance away, right? Right. I'm watching the movie. House is quiet. I'm just watching the movie. And I just hear thump, thump, thump. <laughs> I was like, no, man, no, no. And I know it's the shoes, right? I know it. I don't get out of bed. <laughs> I, I just, I turn up the TV. I'm just sitting there like this. Just like, oh, man, I'm not going to, I don't want to go see it. I don't want to know. I don't, I, 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 no, no. I think I could deal with the shoes moving, but when they're demanding to be released, uh, I got a problem with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it, 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 it got so out of control. And then it stopped for, for about six months. Uh, I'm talking about the shoes, the other noise and stuff. And, and then, um, and, and so uh, part of my closet is all tennis shoes, right? And I've got them all by color, by style. You know, it's a couple of rows and, and they're all laid out and they're nice and neat. And on this end are my boots, tactical boots, motorcycle boots, stuff like that. And, uh, and but the boots never moved, you know, and um, that was it was always on. The, so anyway, this is like three months ago. And uh, doing my thing, I think I got a laundry basket or something, and it's it's in the morning, and I and I'm putting stuff away, and around the corner, my boots are on the floor, and I on everything that I love, I screamed. I was like, ah! <laughs> oh no, not the boots! <laughs> the boots are on the floor. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't so want to see. Did it. they? kick their way out you know um so the boots did it twice it's not like it went on for months mm -hmm. so you know and i put the boots back and and you know it's it's, it's, it's a strange feeling to see this kind of stuff <laughs> um but uh and then it was a couple of days later another pair of boots wasn't the same one uh were down on the floor yeah i don't i don't know i, I so and here's Here's the other, uh, here's a second scary story uh, for Halloween. Um, and maybe you've heard this before. Uh, you must have. So um, I'm lying on my side. Again, I'm in my bedroom and I've got my iPad out and my iPad's on a stand, right? So it's like angled. I got my hand on my pillow and, and I'm researching or reading the news, whatever, my iPad. And right from the back of me, right in the middle of my back, between my shoulder blades, a push, right? And I'm, you know, and I don't, I don't turn around. I don't, man. I don't. And I'm, I'm on my side and I'm like, oh, no. Uh. And, and so I'm not going to look. I don't want to know. And that's how I deal with it. And then and, and here's the other thing. I'm, I was tripping like, um, uh, I say tripping. I was like, is it going to happen again? Right? I'm like freaking myself out. 
Uh, but here's here's the other part, and and I really mean this. There was no way I was going to turn around and see something. Mm-hmm. I, I I didn't want to do it, so I start psyching myself out. It was your imagination. It was you pulling on the covers. It was you. It was this. It was something. It was you know your pillow. What I am literally talking myself out of it. What's the alternative? Mm-hmm. The alternative is 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 scary town. Yeah, and I'm not going to go there. And I never looked, by the way. Uh-huh. I was reading CNN till three o'clock in the morning, man. I just <laughs> take my eyes off the iPad. True story. But I've and heard it, that so much. People yeah. just, I'm going to ignore it and hope it goes away. When when something uh, crosses the the line of from you know something interdimensional, something that you can't quite see, to physical. Where you're being touched, mm-hmm. that that's a different situation, isn't it? It is, but I think most spirits have that ability, at least to a degree. Uh, yeah, I've been bit, kicked, pushed. Uh, one tried to push me down the steps of an asylum. Uh, they got enough energy for that, but they don't usually have much beyond that. And are, are they just trying to get your attention? I, I believe it, so. Or they're right. trying to scare you. They're, some of them just want you to leave. And they're just trying to get rid of you. Trying to get you to pack your bags. Exactly. Um, excuse me. Um, there's another part. You know how it is when you just have that little drop of moisture in your throat. It's a ghost. It's a ghost <laughs> trying to make its way out. Is um, there's there's another part? Is it if, if you're not being hurt, mm-hmm. right? Then you can work through this. But if it is something negative, where somebody's being scratched, your kids, uh, you're getting bruised, um, and there's an introduction of violence. Uh, what do you do then? Well, I go in at that time, and, and I told you earlier about the guy who said his son's girlfriend got slapped. And we went there, and um, immediately I start talking to the people, talking to the family. The son had moved in with his uh, girlfriend's family because he was scared to death. But in talking with them, we discovered that his room was the one that the, his dad's mother had passed away in less than a year before. Okay, so we go up, talk to the spirit, and what it was is the girlfriend and the boy was doing things in grandma's room that old grandma just did not think was proper at all. And I'll never forget, I went back downstairs and I told the guy, look, here's what's going on. Your mom is up there and this is what happened. And he looked at me. I swear he was turning red and I thought he was going to physically attack me. And he said, my mother died. She went to heaven. That's it. It's either heaven or hell. Everything else is demons. But that's not the case in this, this one. His wife went upstairs with the dowsing rods. I stayed down there with him. He refused to look at me. I had uh, my wife and another investigator with me, another officer. They went upstairs about 20 minutes later. She come back and shoved those dowsing rods into him and said, you go talk to your mother. So he went up. He would not touch the rods, but he would ask the questions while one of my people held the rods and got all the correct answers. So he come back and he said, uh, sir, I apologize. I'm sorry for what I said to you. I believe my mother is upstairs. And if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go call my son and tell him to get his butt home. So, yeah, I mean, sometimes. Everything chilled? Yeah. After that, uh, about two years later, he uh, he let the house go back. It was just too much to, to keep. It was a. Uh, an old stone limestone house. He just couldn't do it. 
But in the two years after that, he had no more problems, no more issues at all. Just grandma got mad for what was going on in her room. Simple. Why do your uh, dousing rods have the little curled toes on the end? I was doing that. You know, I told you we did the charity event for the uh, scholarship. And all I owned at that time was one K2 meter and one old elf zone meter, but I sold like eight pair of tickets. So I went out and bought these rods just to give people something to do until they got a turn with the machines. And because they were going to be walking around in the dark, I twisted them. So nobody got a stick in the eye. But that night I learned how great those things work. Uh, for me, they're awesome. And for everyone that night, they were great. So I don't go anywhere without them now. Do you do you hunt for gold? <laughs> I haven't yet, but uh, there's supposed to be veins of it running around the uh, mountains here of Mount Airy. So it's coming. And, and, and what about uh, water? You know, you hear all the stories about dousing rods, you know, looking for wells and looking for water. But I've always felt that uh, water is running through granite and through different minerals and creating energy and and there's something to that um do you find that you know with spirits and 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 different types of activity i think are uh in some cases uh because of the geography in the area do you find that with the dice the dousing rods yes i i use the copper rods and i really believe because the spirits are mostly electrical energy there's right. a transfer between my energy and them through the copper, and it's easier for them to operate them. Uh, do you ever get a ghost uh, or a spirit that's a trickster? Oh, very much. Uh, the old, uh, uh, man, I wish I'd sent you those videos. The old Enoch Knob Bridge I told you about, a young man back in the 80s fell off of it and died. And Patrick is still out there. And he is a joker. He is a trickster. And he has pulled some things on people other than women. He loves women. And if there's a woman investigator out there, he sticks with them. But he has shown himself to be uh, a dog with glowing eyes. He has shown himself, uh, well, I, there's a video of another group who was holding a cigarette out. And you can see the cherry end get really bright because they told him he could have a cigarette. And that's what happened. He was sucking on the end of a cigarette. He hit the cigarette. Yeah. Yeah. You can see the cherry while this guy's holding it up like this, get really bright and just start burning down. Wow. Uh, and he, he would play uh, with the rods. He would set the meters off. There was two spirits out there that I dealt with him and uh, a, a man who was murdered in the nineties out there. That one was not a nice person, but Patrick was a blast. Yeah, and so you, you, when I say trickster, right, you've got the dousing rods out and you're getting uh, lied to, right? They're, sure. They're, yeah. Yeah. They got the same uh, personality death that they had in life. So sure. If, and if some, of them were, probably, some of them probably uh, don't even know that they're dead. I have met those, yeah. They don't yeah. know why I'm in their house. And I believe they see the house no matter what's happened the way they remember it. So that's why you sometimes hear of ghosts floating above the floor or down, you know, with no, no legs. It's because the shapes and, and the locations have changed. Let's take our break right here. This is fade to black. Our guest tonight, ghost hunter, Dan Terry. When we come back after this break, we're going to get to some more videos because it is Halloween night five we'll be right back after this short break hi everybody this is rob halford the mental guard on jimmychurchradio.com your one million gigawatt paranormal powerhouse kumx db bx the Believer is the chilling true story of Dr. John Mack, a renowned Harvard psychiatrist and Pulitzer Prize winner. This is an outreach program from the cosmos to the consciously impaired. 
he risked it all to investigate human encounters with aliens. The Believer, Alien Encounters, Hard Science, and The Passion of John Mack. Written by award-winning former New York Times journalist and author Ralph Blumenthal. Now available in paperback from High Road Books. Are you ready to read about true paranormal events? Unex Media publishes nonfiction books about UFOs, ghosts and haunted places, time anomalies, cryptid creatures, and more. Just like KUNXDB Radio, it's all about unexplained phenomena. Visit www.unxmedia.com to see our list of great book titles by Debbie Ziegelmeyer, Gene Walker, Devin Listrom, Wayne Lawrence, Bill Spicer, and yours truly, Margie Kay. That's unxmedia.com. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I only drink Fade to Black blend coffee from River Moon. Just click on the River Moon Coffee banner at jimmychurchradio.com. Promo code F2B Blend. This is the only way forward. This is Fade to Black. Make contact. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of Fade to Black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the Fade to Black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of Fade to Black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2B Blend for 15% off of your order today. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony. Damn it. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. on the Game Changer and UnX Network. All right. This is Fade to Black. Uh, uh, six days from today, Halloween night, October 31st, is the UnX Network's one-year anniversary. And we're going to originate that celebration from here in the bunker uh, with my co-host, Race Hobbs and Margie K. Full, full, full cast of characters that night. We're going to be doing some uh, ghost hunting live on the air. And we're also going to find out who won the, well, there's going to be three, uh, third, second, and first prize. Uh, the most, the bestest decorated Halloween house. So we're going to do all of that on Monday night. Our guest tonight is Dan Terry. And now, Dan, um, I've got... I've got a few things that that I want to jump into, but I want a, a, a backstory uh, before we do this. Um, I was actually going to go through each one. No, let's don't do that. Let's let, let me back up. Um, I haven't watched it yet. Okay, the ball. Now, um, Josephine is what I've called this one, and. Uh, uh, I started to watch it. Went wait, wait, wait a minute. I I, I want to catch this live on the air. So what's uh, what's the setup for this video? Okay, so the Hotel Josephine in Holton, Kansas, is extremely haunted. The previous owners refused to talk about it. Uh, just didn't do anything. The new owners really want to push it, and they've gotten uh, ghost hunters in there and a few other groups are they're really pushing it now. But last year, a year ago, last September, they got onto the world's largest ghost hunt. 
And if you don't know, that is a uh, cable channel that in 24 hours has teams all over the world. Uh, the, the pyramids of Giza, a, a haunted bar in Ireland, uh, the several places in St. Louis, several places around the country. Uh, there's a haunted jail in Australia they were at, a haunted bar in Canada. And each place has one hour to, sh to show live. And on the screen, you can pick like one of six and watch, watch whichever you want. Well, the Hotel Josephine got that. And a friend of mine uh, named Kathy Ramirez with Ghost Tours of Kansas asked me to come down and help them. So I was there for that. The place is very haunted. This was during our part of the, of the show. So this was live at the time. There's a man and two children that we think are his daughters in the basement. And I was trying to get them to kick that ball together. Here we go. Keep going. That's oh oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, wow. They are trying so hard. Keep wow. going. All red. Oh my God. Keep going. Family effort. Come on, you can do it. You can Family do it. Effort. Come on, push the ball. Oh my gosh. Oh, you guys are doing great. Okay. All right. Stop and rest for a minute. You can stop and rest for a bit if you need to. Stop. <laughs> Just like that. Uh, let's watch this again. Okay. Try again to kick the ball for us. Dad, girls, all of you, make it a family project. Move that ball. That's it. That's it. Keep going. Keep it up. Oh, he's bending all the way around in circles. Keep That's going. Crazy. That's, oh, oh. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, wow. They are trying so hard. Keep wow. going. All red. Oh, my God. Keep going. Family effort. Come on. You can do it. You can Family do it. Effort. Come on. Push the ball. Oh, my gosh. Oh, you guys are doing great. Okay. All right. Stop and rest for a minute. You can stop and rest for a bit if you need to. <laughs> just like that so uh, what direction was it moving actually the ball never moved but no, it, in, it, it, go ahead go ahead it yeah if you notice the lights you can see them reflected on the ball the ball didn't move but what had happened is they tried and they got so close that the the three spirits were setting the two meters off yeah well i could see that it felt like the the ball was vibrating yeah, it was kind of shaking a little bit, but it, it yeah. never actually rolled or moved anywhere. Right, 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 right. And uh, I'm going to I want to watch this again. Sure. Um, and let's see here. Hold on a minute. Did I lose it? Here it is. Okay, try again to kick the ball for us. Dad, girls, all of you, make it a family project to move that ball. That's it. That's it. Keep going. See, right there. Right Keep there. It and it looks yeah. like the, the the ball vibrates right at it, that moment. You're right. It did. And did you notice the orbs flying by during that time? Yeah, yeah. That's 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 pretty strange too. Oh, he's bending all the way around in circles. Keep going. That's oh oh. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, wow. They are trying so hard. Keep wow. going. Yeah, that's right. I'm not okay. starting to kick the ball for us, Dad, girls, all of you. Make it a family project to move that ball. That's it. That's it. Keep right going. there. Keep it up. Mm -hmm. That is crazy town. Keep going. That's oh, oh. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, wow. They are trying so hard. Keep wow. going. All red. Oh, my God. Keep going. Family effort. Come on. You can do it. You can family do it. Effort. Come on. Push the ball. Man, that's a great video, man. And. Uh, just the fact that I don't have a team, but I have friends that get me into the most amazing places like that. Uh, it, it's it. You could see the energy on the ball. I'm not trying to um, 
it, the video is what it is. I don't want to suggest anything, but you can see it at that one moment, something shifts. Yeah. Uh, and I thought this is the first uh, uh, a few minutes ago. I thought it, it, it was, it might've spun uh, just slightly, but you can't tell because it's just a solid color. Right. But I agree. I, I I cannot say it moves, so I never do. But I am with you. It looks to me like it does. Yeah, that one moment, in that, in that one instant, um, mm -hmm. uh, when the lights are are kicking off, that's a uh, that's a great video. Now, um, this video here again, I didn't watch this because of the title on it, um, backstabber. Okay. Okay. So what's the what's the backstory here, and then we'll roll it. John Bush Brewery back in Washington. And I had dealt with one spirit there that I called the coward because he tried to scare us years before. And when we started coming towards him, he ran up some stairs. We could actually hear him stomping up the stairs at that time and pacing back and forth, but he would never get near us. So the place sold. New owners didn't want anything to do with the ghosts. That's fine. About a year into it, it was the Franklin County's 200th anniversary, and we arranged for four ghost hunts in historical buildings, and one of them was the brewery. They let us in one night, and that's when the employees were telling me there's a ghost in this one area that scares them and tries to, uh, knocks things off, just trying to scare them out of, the, out of the room. It's the same one I dealt with years before, and... A friend of mine, a psychic in there, tells me, Dan, be careful, because if you turn your back on him, he'll stab you. Well, I turned my back on him, and that's where this one picks up. Okay, here we go. Backstabber. We don't want to keep, we want to shut him down. Okay. Not, not taunt him, shut him down. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. To whichever spirit's in here, I'm not going to play games with you. We're done for the night. You're done. There will be no messing with the women, and especially Candace, because I will come back here with Sage, and I will make your life terrible. You know what smudging is, I have no doubt. So, there will be no more of that. You're going to knock it off, and you're going to leave these people alone. Next time I'm here, you want to come to me, at me again? That's fine. I have no problem with that. I enjoy it. But you're not messing with these people anymore. We're shutting you down. You want to set off a meter and argue with me? Go for it. All right. One. You can do better than that. I'm not joking. We will come back with tools to make your life or your death dreadful. We're shutting you down. Stop whatever you're doing. You're not harassing Candace anymore. I don't care. Stop it. Okay. Yeah, as soon as I get close, he stops. Don't turn your back to another ship with that. Oh, I hope he does. Damn, Tim, you're right. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, like I said, we're not joking anymore. You're done with this. If I hear you do anything to Candace, even make noise to frighten her, I will come back and I will deal with you. Uh, oh, man. Uh, so my friend Tim is sensitive and he got the idea. This guy was a, was a backstabber. And he said, Dan, if you turn your back on him, he'll stab you. And I said, I hope he does. And I turned around. You can even see my feet turn around. As soon as I did, it was like he was trying to grab that meter to hit me with it. That, uh, don't mess with Dan. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I got a, an attitude at times. <laughs> is that, um, uh, let me ask you something here. 
Did this uh, session start off that way? Or was this a buildup of of you standing your ground? No, uh, you know, I stood my ground years ago, but every time I went in there this time, I got nothing. And I was in the main area where there's a spirit there who was a handyman, and he passed away in there back in the 20s. And he is the one, Fritz is his name. He's the one who's the most active. He's the one that I deal with the most. So I was in there with Fritz and the rest of the people. My team and a couple of the others who had bought tickets for this were back there. And this spirit started trying to scare them out. Well, they come and got me. And uh, I went back there and that's where about where you saw me come in there. Um, what happened uh, later after uh, the end of this video? Candace quit, <laughs> and I don't know if it was over the spirit or not. And uh, after that, we left there, and basically the night was over, and we came on outside and locked up. We were done. I mean, did the meters stop jumping off? Yes. Uh, after I – and I, I may use some foul language here. I apologize. I told him if I had to come back there, I was bringing a priest and an ass woman. Ah, and after okay. that, he didn't didn't do it again. Yeah, there you go. Priest and an ass whooping and a fistful of sage. <laughs> right. Sounds like uh, a Clint Eastwood movie, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it, I was going to go there. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was interesting. And um, in most of your videos um, that, that I've seen, the responses are instantaneous. There isn't a, a delay or you're waiting. Um, the The question and answer and the response is 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 quick. Sometimes uh, those are the best ones. Some of the best ones I've got. Some of those I've never shown before. But uh, yeah, usually it's it's pretty quick for me. But. Again, I spend days and days in these places, so the spirits get to know me, and they want the attention. Sure, sure. Uh, next up, let's see. Uh, let's go with... Okay, let's go with Ray. Oh, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Okay. I want to go with toilet. Oh, that's my name of the video. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. That's all right. Um, you've got <laughs> it's it's a video of a of a toilet. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a toilet. Yeah, it's You're a right. toilet. It is. Okay. Um, so what's the? We're um, back in the Hotel Josephine. Okay. This room has had two women. One was murdered. One is believed to committed suicide. But there is questions. One was found dead in the bathtub. And uh, 20, 30 years later, one was found hanging in the next room. Another ghost team went in there. And they got like five minutes of screaming EVPs. Just a scream that was constant, like replay. We went up there. Again, this was on video live for the world's largest ghost hunt. We set the K2 meters in that bathroom on the back of the toilet, and I started talking to them. And that's where that picks up. Okay. So uh, uh, when I got the videos, by the way, uh, Dan Dan was relentless. I was watching my email all day long. Bloop, another one. <laughs> bloop, 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 bloop. And, and I was going through these, and I started watching this, okay? So this is my setup. I see the top of the toilet. I see two meters. And I went, I, I'm stopping this right here. I'm saving <laughs> this, this for the show. And so everybody, this is the toilet video. <laughs> okay, any of you like to speak with us, please? How about giving us a scream?
Did you commit suicide in this room? Did you hang yourself in this room? I need you to tell me as clear as you can. Did somebody kill you? Do you want help? Oh. Somebody killed you? Is that what you're telling me? Okay, stop the meters. My battery just died on my speaker. Okay, flash the meters again if somebody killed you, murdered you. Just drain the battery on my speaker. Yeah, and they were using it to make these flash so much. Is there some way we can help you? Yeah? How can we help you? Um, do you have family still alive? Yeah, I can tell you need help, but you want help. Let me ask you this one. Are you the lady who died in the bathtub? Are you the lady? If, if you're not, if you were hung, then stop flashing the lights. Was you killed in the bathtub? Did you die by hanging? Flash the lights if you died by hanging. Wow, red on all. Oh, this is funny. She needs help and I don't know how to help her. How can we help you? Well, we're gonna to need to get a sensitive who can yeah. see and communicate with them, but we will get you some help if we can. Do you want help? Light the, light the meters if you want help. I'm talking to the lady who hung herself. I'm sorry. The lady who was hung in here, hanged. Would you light these meters up if somebody you know killed you? Was it a stranger that caused you to be hanged. We've had a lot of batteries go dead tonight, haven't we? Yeah. Are you still here? Would you flash the lights if you're still in the room with us? I think we're done. She's done. Yeah. But that, she, was, that was a lot of energy. It was on command too. Yeah. Several times. Yeah, that that's something. That was- I, that's I kind of got freaked out. I got a little anxious. Mm-hmm. No, I, I, I didn't dig that. I almost felt like there was a presence here. Really? I, that, <laughs> I mean, I I looked around me like three or four times. I was just like and I was starting to, to, to uh, wow. That wow. place I, is I, amazing. Yeah, I want to uh, uh, I want to uh, ask ask the chat room, did you guys feel anxious? I mean, I, I almost stopped it a couple of times. I felt like I needed to talk to somebody like, you know, we need to uh, slow this down. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I didn't feel it. He says he did. Fox, uh, he's the manager of the hotel, and uh, yeah, he 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 seemed to, but I, I don't feel anything like that. I'm not psychic at all. That uh, I just got a real anxious feeling uh, listening uh, to that. The uh, uh, the response, uh, you know, those are very sensitive questions. Yes, and and they were right there. When did did you do you feel um, towards the end? And I started to breathe a little easier too. I was if those things were to flash one more time, <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would have lost my doo doo. Um, do you feel the room calm down as as the responses stopped? Does the atmosphere change? It did, and I believe they left. I, I don't know why. I, I don't know if I insulted them or if they were just out of energy, 
but I believe they left the room, uh, at least that part of it. So, yeah, it does feel different. Lighter. Man, that was pretty intense. That was pretty intense. If somebody's listening to this show in the dark, <laughs> good luck, man. Good luck. All right. Um, uh, we're going to head into overtime. We've got some more uh, video. This is Halloween. Our guest tonight is Dan Terry, Most Haunted on KUNX. And again, I want to remind everybody what's happening. Tomorrow night, we have Shaw the Loon Witch is going to be here for the ninth annual Halloween special. You know what Shaw does? Uh, do you uh, do you do tarot, uh, Dan? Do you ever have your cards read? No, I, I've never had that. You got a Ouija board hanging in the background. Yeah, it's just interesting. I I, don't, I only use dowsing rods and K2 meters. That's about the okay. extent of it. Shaw comes on this show. Uh, this, this will be the ninth year. And we do back-to-back-to-back-to-back one-minute card readings. Wow. Pop, 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 pop. And it is the funnest show ever. And each year, um, I'll have somebody call in and say, you know, Shaw read my cards last year. And it was uh, spot on the money. Um, and I just, I, I find uh, tarot, I think with anything like a Ouija board or the dowsing rods, these are uh, a conduit. You said copper too, by the way. Yes. These are conduit. These are just the tools to access uh, the other realms that are out there. Uh, it's right in front of us. And whatever tools you choose to use, you can um, make contact. You can. And <clears throat> I've done it. A friend of mine has a Ouija board museum in St. Louis, uh, Dr. Mark Farley, and he uses Ouija boards for that. Yeah, it's an, it, it's incredible. I have, a, I have a Ouija board tray on my coffee table uh -huh. with no planchette. No, I don't play around. <laughs> but, but, but it is there uh, for a conversation piece. Let's take our break right here. This sure. is... Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> Our guest tonight, Dan Terry. I am your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. It's night five of Halloween for us here on Fade to Black. On the Game Changer on NX Networks, I'm your host, Jimmy Church. We'll be right back after this short break. Stay with us. You're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the X. Hey, what up, y'all? It's your girl Vivica Fox here, and you are listening to my boy, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. Hello, Fader Knots. Jimmy Church here. You've seen me with my thunderstorm. Now you can purify the air in your home and get healthy, clean, fresh smelling air and eliminate odors just like I do right here in the bunker. The Eden Pier Thunderstorm uses oxy technology that naturally sends out O3 molecules into the air, which seek out odors and air pollutants in your home and destroys them. It's called a thunderstorm because it purifies the air just like after a thunderstorm. And right now, you can save $200 on an Eden Pier Thunderstorm 3 pack for whole home protection. With this special offer, you're getting three units for under $200. Seriously. Go to EdenPureDeals.com and use Fader 3. Shipping is free and it's easy. Just scroll down. You'll see my name right there, Jimmy Church. Click on it and get your deal today. That's EdenPureDeals.com. 
This is Billy Carson, founder and CEO of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. ForbiddenKnowledge.tv is the fastest growing and one of the most watched networks in the world. And I would like to personally invite you to check out our expanding library of TV, film, lectures, and special presentations. ForbiddenKnowledge.tv has over 6,000 videos covering lost history, health, UFOs, spirituality, and our future. We are committed to our community. And with my personal invitation, you can right now get your own free 30-day membership at Forbidden Knowledge. TV. Your own library of information starts today at ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Your one million gigawatt paranormal powerhouse, KUNXDB, VX. Are you ready to read about true paranormal events? Unex Media publishes nonfiction books about UFOs, ghosts, and haunted places, time anomalies, cryptid creatures, and more. Just like KUNXDB Radio, it's all about unexplained phenomena. Visit www.unxmedia.com to see our list of great book titles by Debbie Ziegelmeyer, Gene Walker, Devin Listrom, Wayne Lawrence, Bill Spicer, and yours truly, Margie Kay. That's unxmedia.com. Introducing the Game Changer Blend from River Moon Coffee that delivers a customized blend made specifically for the Fader Knots. If the game is rigged, change the game it's a bolder cup with some bite game changer is the coffee of choice for those that prefer an organic dark roast that is slightly lighter and milder but it's still dark with wild notes of pecans and chocolate with a rich balanced full-bodied cup that is roasted to perfection for a great coffee to start your day as an after dinner coffee or anywhere in between Artisan, small batch, roasted to perfection. USDA certified organic, all River Moon coffee is freshly roasted and packaged in the USA. Just go to rivermooncoffee.com or click on the banners over on our site and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. rivermooncoffee.com Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in paranormal talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Halloween Night 5. Dan Terry is with us. Ghost Hunter. Whew, man, I got to uh, I got to admit, man, that that I I've, I got a little freaked out that that last video. Uh, I see. <laughs> got a little anxious on that one, man, and uh, you know my your peripheral vision starts firing off. You start seeing them, start looking around, and and I'm like, man, this thing cannot end fast enough. Let's get to the end of this one. Uh, yeah, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Thanks. Yeah. Why do we like that? Why do we like the adrenaline rush? I mean, what is it? You know, you know, you're not supposed to go into the woods, but we do, right? I mean, what 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 are you doing? You know, and, but we still do it. But Again, it's I got to test my courage out, see if I can handle this. See, here's the thing: I get to visit. I, I, I get to just watch the video. You're 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 going into these places, and um, man, I've uh, I've done two ghost hunts right with teams. Both times, stuff happened. Mm-hmm. The only reason why I didn't get totally freaked out is that I had people around me. Right. That, but if I, you know, when. Um, uh, I get really, really anxious when I'm watching some of these ghosts, knowing that they are in a, a in pitch black, right? And and walk and you can't see in front of you, and you can't see to the side of you. 
and and you're you're in there, you know, trying to find some action. I get I, I'm not I'm not into that. I'm not going to go into Dan. I swear, I'm not going into some old hospital, some sanitarium, some crazy place in the dark and walk through there. I've I've played the game Silent Hill. <laughs> You know, I know what time it. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to. I was in a jail. We're doing a ghost hunt in a jail, right? And uh, so we go in. I go into this jail cell, and they they close the door. And right then, you just get all anxious, you know, and you're closed in this. And then they go, and by the way, uh, an inmate committed suicide in this cell. I'm like, man, let me out. Let me out. <laughs> let me out. I don't want to hear the rest of the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to be on the other side. Uh, when you when you tell the story, I'm not going to be in there. You know, I'm in there. They're going knock once if you are here. I'm like, man, no, 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 open the door. <laughs> Come on, that's the best part. No, it's not, man. <laughs> I watch that on TV. I don't want to be a part of it. Uh, but I, it's it's just so much fun uh, to get the adrenaline rush. I mean, mm-hmm. that that is just just crazy. Okay, so we have. Um, I'm serious too. They closed the door. By the way, <laughs> you know, and just hung himself from right there. I was like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Unlock the door. I'm out. I'm out. Okay. Um, I guess this is back at the brewery. This one is called, oh, no, no, no. I want to, uh, um, uh, Fox. The Fox Theater in St. Louis. Amazing, beautiful building. Okay, we've got two videos. One, um, this one is called Fox Sam, Sean? Sam. Sam. Fox Sam. I don't have my glasses on, and uh, it's this big. So here we go. Uh, what's what's the story here? Uh, Sam is a spirit. Okay. When St. Louis Paranormal Research Society got to ghost hunt the fox and was doing uh, – ghost tours of it and they invited me in to help and i got to this one room because the lady who was running this thing says there's room down here in the fox club but we can't go down there that's the mean one and that's the one that locks people in rooms uh throws light bulbs at girls uh just causes all kinds of mischief well i said i'm going down there i've got to be in that room i never got to leave that room that year because that ghost would only talk to me. And this is one of them. I believe this one's from the second year I was there. But it was uh, talking to Sam, who was there with some ghost children. Um, we don't go into the woods at night. That's just, And we, we also don't go, you don't go into a cemetery, right? Have, have you done that too as well? Yes, and in fact, the property I bought two years ago here on this mountaintop has a cemetery on it. No, mistake, 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 mistake. Very peaceful. The neighbors are really quiet. Okay, um, I'm going to share this story with you real quick. Everybody's heard it a million times. Um, I'm driving down the road in Indianapolis. I'm by myself, and I drive by this house. It's for rent. It's got a pool, an in-ground pool in the front yard, small house for rent. And I flip this. I'm like, oh, party house for the summer, (laughs) right? I'm like, I'm 20, 19 years old. And I turn my car around and I go back. I park. I I walk onto the property. And as I walk onto the property, I look to my left, and there's a chain link fence. On the other side of the chain link fence in the front yard is a family plot, a graveyard with like eight gravestones Mm -hmm. and i look at that and it's right there man it's like right there and i turn around i look at the in-ground pool i look at the (laughs) graveyard i'm like (sighs) in-ground pool wins all right (laughs) there you go i i i I don't care so anyway so check this out i go and i call my friends i found the house man uh we're you know we're gonna rent this place right where's it at it's over here and blah 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 blah. I, i go collect my friends Um, in my neighborhood where my parents live and we jump in the car, we go back. You ready? Mm -hmm. House is gone. What do you mean gone? Disappeared. No. Yeah. True story. 
Wow. 100% true story. My friends in there in the back of the car, church, you made it all up. I'm like, dudes, the house was right here. <laughs> it was what? right. Yeah, crazy. Was all the right, pool let's... still there or was it uh, all gone? It, it's a long story, man. I, I spent I spent days on Google Earth, you know, uh-huh. just, just trying to um anyway, let's go, let's go to the let's go to Fox and Sam. Here we go. Okay, Sam, sorry, buddy. You still with me? Adam boy. Now that was a good one. I like the when the pushes are, are strong like that. Thanks. And again, you can set off the meter or you can speak to uh, speak to us through this box right here, and we will hear you a little later on. There's another box over there that can say words. I know it takes some time to fi- figure out how to make it say what you want it to, but you can give it a shot. What was the word? Did you yes. ask? Ask. There you go. Talking about questions. Right on. Remind me of that. <laughs> okay. Is that you? Sam, was that you setting off the K2 meter that time? Ah, boy. Mm. Good job. Thanks. Okay, Sam, uh, they're wanting me to come back on Mondays in October, I think three Mondays, and just talk to you and talk to people about you. Is that okay? All right. Well, I think we'll probably do that. But I'd like to know more about you. Tell me, once again, was you killed in the 70s? Now, that's a no. You spread them apart. Was you killed in the 50s? And was you killed in the 60s? Go ahead, give them a good one. Did you hear that behind us? Does she come and go? Yeah, it's just something. All right. Was she connected to the child? Okay. Now, if I remember correctly, and help me out here, Sam, because my memory's not uh, not the best. But if I remember right, she was not related to the child, was she? Let me reword that because that's tough. Is that female spirit related to the child? No, I don't think so. In an attempt to protect the child from you. That's what I remembered. Hmm. Okay. Wow, that's interesting. That spirit was really strong, but he he wanted to confess to me. And I ended up being in that room the first time, like I said, for like six hours. And every time I tried to leave the room, he would do something to keep me there. He'd set off all the devices, make a lot of noise, do something to keep me from leaving. And you can hear that. It's, it's just going on constantly in the background. But here's the other thing. Um, you were getting no answers, not yes answers. Yeah. Uh, the, they would cross for yes, they'd separate for no, but on occasion, they'd shoot across uh, opposite right. for, for a real no. Right, right. Wow, that's fascinating. Um, what was the meter that was going off in the background? The, I had a K2 meter set up, and that's the one that was going off. Right. And the other side of the table was a uh, spirit box. That's what we were heard. Oh, that's that's we heard. what it was. Okay. Mm-hmm. Man, that, 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 do you, um, because I'm trying to keep myself from physically, you know, jumping, <laughs> that K2 goes off. How do you keep from reacting? I mean, do, do you ever jump? No, I get excited. I, I, to be honest, I'm just like, oh, well, that's cool because it's what I'm wanting. I'm wanting them to, to, answer me so when they do that's awesome this next video i guess we're back at the brewery and this one is called ray a friend of mine had the k2 out and there was a little girl ghost in there that was really wanting attention and actually matt the guy with the camera from the one of the earlier ones was there 
he turned the light off and you could see the meter going off. And then he even asked Ray, can I turn the meter back on or the light back on? And Ray said, yes. Yeah. So you can see there's nobody close to the meter as it's going off in responses. Here we go. This is Ray in the brewery. Oh, no, that's the same one we did last time. Oh, wait a minute. Right. Yeah. Okay. And I may have mista- made a mistake sending it to you, too. Okay, hold on for a second. Ray Brewery. Okay, this is, see, I can do it this easy. Let's go here, and let's go here. And here we go. Oh, see? That's it. Yeah, as it said, it was a little boy. Mm-hmm. Ray, can I go ahead and turn the light back on? Yeah, I turn. Okay, stop. Please. Thank you. Now light it back up again. You can light it back up again. Come on. Oh, man. There you go. That was me with the weird breath. What activates a K2? Electrical energy. Uh, The original use for those was finding problems in electrical wiring. So if you're running along the wiring and it starts flashing, you've got an electrical issue. Uh, I was in a hotel in Herman, Missouri once and was able to determine they had a, a clock that needed to get thrown out and buy a new one because it had so much energy coming out, it had a bad wire somewhere. So that's what they're originally for. And the spirits can use their electromagnetic energy to set it off in answering. There, um, there's a video here called Herman, Herman Police. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not, I'm going to try to load it again. Let me see okay. if I can pull it up. And uh, no, I cannot. So I'm going to play this video. Let me see here. Just everybody, just be patient. Because I can play it here. Okay, now. Um, ba, 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 ba. I'm going to see if I can pull this up, everybody. Just stay with me. All right. So you have no problem with the policeman here? No. Your K2 is good. Very good action. Oh, do they need it's else? Awesome. No, no. That's the only one. Was that you setting off the meter for me? Was you setting off that gray meter on the table? No. Is there another spirit setting off the meter? I'll take that as a yes. The black one went off too. Okay. Okay. The spirit that is setting off the meter, would you stop, please? All right, well, let me ask you now, talk to you. Would you cross the rods if you're the spirit setting off the meter? Cross the rods or set the meter off again, whatever you want to do. Wow. Oh, that's great. Awesome. Outstanding. That's cool. Okay. All right, stop the meter for me so I can ask you a question. Thank you. Oh, man. Oh, that's nuts. Oh, that spirit was really good. Watch this one. Did you pass away in this building? Stop dead. Yeah. As soon as you you asked, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you pass away on the farm? No. Okay. So you were trying to get attention to the spirit who's been setting off the meter, are you male? Okay, are you a female? Were you a female? And meter action. Pretty good, pretty good, all right. All right, ma'am, I don't know if you was in here, but my name's Dan. 
Do you have a message for somebody you're wanting in particular? No. Okay, so let me go back to asking the questions and see if we can figure out. Did you live in the city limits of Herman? Did you live in Gascony County? When you was alive, before you came here, was you in the county? Ooh. And none of the others, it's yeah. closer. Ha, ha, ha. All right, would you wow. stop the meters, please, so I can ask you another question? Are you enjoying setting the meters off? Look at that, look at that. <laughs> All right, well, you're doing a great job. Did, what did Dave Terry can do that? Yeah, this is gonna be really weird, but I swear I just saw something white under the table across from that chair to that chair. Was yeah. that you? It's like a board. That Dan saw? Meters, mm. it was. Thank you. Three of them went off. Thank you very much. I'm a little behind on that book. It should be out next year. Oh, man. that. So that, the I, Herman Police Station used to be an old folks home. And the people working there, dispatchers, hear people shuffling, walking. They hear a, uh, a grandfather clock go off that isn't in there. And they brought me in because they finally saw someone running and actually pulled a gun and chased them, thinking it was a real person. And, uh, yeah, they let me ghost hunt there, and that's what you saw. The, I, I, you know, I've been around K2 meters, and uh, I've, I've seen them jump, and there's been a couple of instances where it was something happening at that time. It's another thing to sit for two or three hours and not have anything happen. Yeah. Right. Right. So I know what's going on. For that to be happening when you're saying, okay, stop the meter, brup, that, that's crazy. And and to ask a question and have that light up instantaneous, I've done this enough to know that that is, that's extraordinary, Dan. You've it's rare, yes. Gift. You've got a gift. They, they do like hanging out with you. I think it's because, like I said, I sit, I introduce myself, I treat them like they're living people, and most of the ones I deal with are actually very polite. I'm sure in life they were polite folks. And they're just trying to have a conversation. So it's working. Do you think Do you think to them were the ghosts? I have wondered that myself. I, I don't know. I think, like I said, some of them actually wonder why we're in their house. But I think a lot of them, like this lady, knew very well she was she was dead. She just didn't want to go anywhere, and she wanted some attention from us. You know, I I mean, I often wonder, right? You know, Dad shows up and goes, "Hey, man, check this out. You guys want to see? I got this ball headed ghost." <laughs> yeah, dude, with, this with dude, rods. <laughs> yeah, you guys want to see a real ghost? You know. I mean, it, it's just strange to me that um, that we may be interrupting their thing, yeah. right? Where we see something off and, you know, we see a shadow, we see, you know, and maybe that's what we are to them, mm -hmm. right? That we're a shadow, we're, you know, we're an entity, we're a spirit, and they're living in another dimension, in, which is real. And then we are interrupting that. And that's very possible for many of them. But I think this one actually, she was talking with me. She was trying to have a conversation as best we could. So she was aware I was not a ghost. I, you know, I am someone just like her. Now, um, what do you, um, I did notice, I, it's in one of the videos that, that we didn't play tonight where you've got uh it looks like you've got one of the uh the huff radios is is that what you guys are using yeah we're using one of those uh especially in the jail cell and in a couple other places and how effective are those you know mostly they're just a pain 
there's just a constant noise. Mm -hmm. But as you've seen the one in the jail cell that said his name four times, and that's all it said. Right. That was incredible. I think it was the steel construction was keeping signals out. But man, that was incredible that night. Um, how how can every if, if somebody is in your area, you're in one of the Carolinas, right? North Carolina, yeah. You're in uh, in North Carolina. If somebody wants to reach out to you, how do they do that? Well, uh, spookstalker.com or my email is danterryghost at gmail.com. And, and uh, either yeah, one of those. Right. And so if, if there's another paranormal uh, ghost hunting group, they can reach out to you too as well? Oh, absolutely. I'm hoping to get with some of them up here and share information and do the things like I did back home. So they invite me into some of these things. Man, this is one of the funnest shows I've done in a long time. Well, I've had a ball. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dan. And happy Halloween to you. Um, and I can't wait to get you back. And it, this was just absolutely awesome. You know, one thing I did want to ask you or tell you on behalf of myself and all the police officers I know, we all listen to Art Bell and to George Norrie and to you and to Whitley Strieber and all that. You guys saved a lot of us from car accidents because <laughs> we couldn't doze off. I met in the school this big, huge man. I swear he was 7'3", probably weighed in at 300 pounds, big cop. And he said he liked to get out and drive up and down the street looking for anything to pull over. Unless he was listening to EVPs on one of you guys' shows. He yeah. said, I, I couldn't even sit in an alleyway and run radar. I had to be on the street and just sit there. I, I, I can't say the officer's name, uh, uh, but we still talk. About a year ago, I got pulled over. And, uh, you know, and I'm doing my thing and, you know, giving my stuff. He comes back and he leans in and he goes, I just want to say this, man. I'm driving up and down this road every night and I listen to coast to coast. I was like, Oh, get out of here. <laughs> get out of here. He goes, Be safe, Mr. Church. And he, <laughs> let me go. And uh, it was the funniest thing. And that, that really happens, you know? Yes. And it was, it was funny. He goes, this is my road. <laughs> I'm out here every night and I listen to coast to coast. Be <laughs> safe I out there. Mr. When I patrolled midnight, man, it was every night I listened to you and, and the others. And man, I really uh, appreciate it was awesome. that. Oh, I appreciate yeah. you too. Like I said, you kept me awake on some long <laughs> nights. <laughs> I put some people to sleep too as well. <laughs> so there you go. Hey, Dan, behave and be well. Happy Halloween. I look, to you. I look forward to our next conversation, my man. Thank you so much. You stay spooked. Good night. <laughs> You're the best. Absolute best. Dan Terry. And I want to remind everybody, uh, uh, six days from today, we're going to be celebrating the one-year anniversary of KUNX, the X, on Halloween, October 31st, right here on Fade to Black with Margie K and Ray's Hobbs and all the other show hosts. We're going to be doing some ghost hunting live on the air. That is Monday night, October 31st. Dan Terry, thank you so much. An absolute amazing show tonight. Fade to Black is produced by Hilton J. Palm, Renee, Dennis, and Kevin. Announcers are Steve Hart of Gene Vitoa, Mark D. Kovar. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldridge. Intro, Space Boy, spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network, and this broadcast is owned and copyrighted. 2022 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network, Inc. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black of the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tomorrow night, Shaw, the Loon Witch. Until then, I want you to be safe. Go Beckley Tappy. Go Beckley Tappy.